he uh, couldn't even escape or anything. So I can, now I can he's already, clean and he, I can already he's answer great. your question. So I can already, it, consent only applies to people who are in a healthy mental state. If they're not in a healthy mental state, they can't consent. So if you're like addicted to drugs, you don't have the ability to consent in that way. What about if you have Down well, syndrome? How how do you know the the various uh, 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 spectrum of mental conditions where uh, that's can literally be there's there's academic fields to define that. You can go ask the psychologist if you want. Uh, that means nothing, bro. New it means there's me. an, if you're asking He's about if you're asking about a complicated <laughs> academic field that answers that question, then go bother the complicated academic field. I don't really need to give you an answer because there's an academic field. So you that don't that. have an answer. Oh. No, he I do didn't have say an that. answer. He's pointing that's experts. That's such a weird way to respond to that. No, it's a perfectly rational way. It means I don't want to bother no, with I, explaining no, this no, complicated no, field you, to you. Not you. I meant him. Because it's like saying, like, how do you know how to treat these medical conditions for someone? And it's like, well, we have hospitals where there are people that are specially educated in these fields to know how to deal with this. And then they respond with, well, that means nothing to me. Or I think I think no, it's talking to you like, they, well, oh, so you don't know how to do heart surgery, so therefore it's it's fake. No, no, no. My my response is that you that the scientists cannot uh, help uh, always help these people because it's they're a spiritual a problem as well. They're not called scientists. So, they're called what? psychologists. So, no, so no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying that everything? people can be addicted to sin as well. So what? something, uh, an imposition of will. Well, I mean, sort of. So you can get addicted. You can get addicted to literally anything. That's sort of true. But addiction is a specific yeah, kind of a mental state. Yeah, but people can help you by people 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 can help you by imposition of will right by imposing themselves. no again so imposition of will would be a way to try to achieve the goal but it would be immoral if there was another way that was less harmful that could achieve the same goal how do you know there is another way uh, well if you're an all-powerful being there's definitely another way you can literally snap your fingers and just change it but how do you know that's the best way if it causes the least harm what's the clearest cut but, but, example of this of of which thing? Well, the one I like is the death penalty, but which one least harm would you use? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Like, I need more context to frame the question in my brain. Well, so, like... the idea, if you want to reduce harm for the public, you take the criminal off the street. Right. You don't necessarily give them the death penalty right away. Then sure. you say, well, you know, the, if what's better than the death penalty? Well, maybe lock them up for life. Right? Sure. Yeah, that would be... Yeah. Less immoral than like permanently ending their existence. Yes. So you think that God is immoral because He allowed sin in in the no. world? No, no. Allowing sin is perfectly fine. So I have no problem with sin. I think sin is not bad. So I'm fine with sin. I think God is immoral for Evil. drowning millions of babies. I think He's immoral for destroying cities. I think He's immoral for turning people to salt against their will. When you say millions of babies what are you talking about global flood so like he flooded the no, earth. i don't believe in a global flood well that, that's it, fine, it fine local flood. It's, it's just an example so um if god did if god forced other people to do things they didn't consent to doing that would be immoral what would be but a sin? i'm saying to you there is more evidence that there was a local flood uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't i don't Persia care to, to me it doesn't make a difference whether or not it was global or local god drowned people against their will that's immoral but they were evil. They were they they still, hated God's still and, and, so, uh, so this goes back to no, the, the death no penalty more. example that was the other guy talked about. Like, is there a way to wait accomplish a second, the wait a goal? You believe in a one sec. Right, one sec. So, if you can accomplish the goal without literally ending their lives, then it's immoral to end their lives. So, for example, he could have just teleported them to their own universe, um, where they could live as sinfully as they wanted in their own universe. Instead of drowning them to death, but he decided to drown I mean, them to death. If God exists, uh, are you against death penalty? Yes. That wouldn't technically mean he ended their lives. He just put them in another Dude. position, like hell or Thank heaven. You, um, so, so wait a second. So wait a second. Is body autonomy a sin? Can you say? Is bodily autonomy? I don't know. You mean Bo like abortion? A basic, basic. No. Well, well, we can go there. But uh, what about fighting for your country? Fighting for your country, killing anyone ever for any reason against their will is, is immoral. It can be justified, still immoral. Usually, people that oh, are you're, in so a war, but you don't. God doesn't kill though. Yeah, that God doesn't put you in hell or heaven. That's still yeah, killing. So, so if, if he if he but... ends your biological life, that's literally what killing is. Killing doesn't mean ending your consciousness permanently. If he's ending your biological life, that's killing. Right, and if they still oh, go to hell, that's eternal dying for. So that's even worse. 
Yes, so that'll be worse. So, so, so he, he kills you, yes. and then he sends you to another place you didn't consent to being, so those two immoral things. So if someone dies from old age, there, that's also murder from God's standpoint? Yes, if God forced you to be in a world where you die of old age and you didn't consent to being a part of this world, then God has killed you. But what if uh, this world has a purpose, and uh, by allowing that, he would get a maximal, a maximally um, mm. virtue. Ma uh, he would maximize virtue in uh, those beings. So, if God forced you to be in this world that maximizes virtue, and you didn't consent to be here, then you're a slave, and that's immoral. But what if I wanted to be? Well, then it's fine. If you consent to being here, that's fine. But uh, I mean, life is always better than but, not life. No, that's okay. definitely not the case. Like literally, suicide is a thing. Not living is better than many but kinds of. They're life. mentally unstable. No, if suicide Islam... is not caused by the mentally unstable. T jump. If Islam is true, your argument fails because um, then it would be that we all consented to come here. Sure. We were shown our rights. So, well, I'm not sure what you're saying. So you're saying in Islam, we all consented to be here? Yeah. So if Islam is true, doesn't your argument like go away? Uh, Sure. If it's the case that we all consented to be here, then it would not be immoral for us to be here. Okay. Don't think that's how it works in the Quran, but uh, okay. So I mean... can I give an example, another example? Sure, go for it. So... If you play a piece of music like Claire Debussy to a seven-year-old girl, that that Wait. human being is morally so. So don't better use any me. anyone who is underage doesn't have the ability to consent. So use try to use adults to make better examples. Yeah, I'm trying to show 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 to you how people that don't go through struggle and pain and don't experience suffering cannot experience some goods as much as some people that well that's that's de that. demonstrably false so literally if the world i'm saying is that um we have exactly this world as it is with god and you could choose to be here if you wanted to or you could opt out so you can choose all of the suffering and all of the growth or you can choose, nah, I'm going to go to my own universe with my own thing. So all of the benefits that you could ever imagine under a God-based universe, you can get in this better world that I'm talking about because this world that we live in now is one of the options you could choose to go to. But firstly, in philosophy, greatest possible world is incoherent, right? No. It's like stating the highest, uh, highest number. You can always add one more. No, right. So, because the best yeah. of all possible world isn't cumulative. It's not like the most number of good actions. The best of all possible world is any like the world having one extra law of physics that's impossible to force people to do what they don't consent to doing. It's not about some a number of people. It doesn't make a difference. So, do you think a world with one happy person is better than uh, a world with two happy persons? The number of people here doesn't make a difference. <laughs> wow, that that's the first. That's a first because. Uh, that's what possible worlds means. Well, I, I would say that a world with two means. happy person is uh, better, like, logically. The world isn't better, no. Like, the world in the state of affairs is the same either way. Yeah, just there's the number more of people happy. The number of happiness isn't what makes it better. So just having lots of happy people, like having a world of just people on cocaine and who are all happy doesn't necessarily make it a better world. So, like, I would say that a world where people are playing... Dark Souls, and it's very, very hard, and they're very, very frustrated, but they're doing it consensually, is a better world than people who are all forced to have cocaine and be happy all the time. So con consent here is what makes it important, not level of happiness. Uh, you're a finite being. You're not omniscient. How can you know what's the greatest possible world when you don't have access to all of the variants? Uh, because I know what objective morality is. So I know it's a better world is one where it's impossible to force people to do things they don't consent to, and God could have done that and didn't, so God's immoral. That leads to absurdities. There's no absurdity. I, I see no absurdity. Seems like you're making stuff up. No, I, and, and what you said, like you have your own planet. I, I see that as arbitrary, and I see that as well. That's not and, that's not an absurdity. So there's a difference between absurdity and arbitrary. Arbitrary means uh, determined based off of no system or set of rules, and this is determined by a set of system and set of rules. So it's literally not arbitrary, and it's not absurd because absurd means that there's some like logical contradiction or nominological contradiction and there's neither of those in anything i said so it's neither arbitrary nor absurd you're just seem to be making up words you 
don't like and then trying to attribute it to my model because you don't like it. But you no, do... it seems like you're spoiled, like a spoiled brat that wants everything, right? Uh, no, I just want morality. So, are we down to the god made us so he has the right? And how could we? Be oh, we so were there ready? earlier, so that yeah, was that was that. that was we went through that like an hour ago. Well, I would say that the most that God could give to man, he gave by becoming a man and remaining forever as a God man in all worlds. Visible well, that's and invisible. a garbage yeah. argument. So like that seems like kind of like the Greek gods or the Roman gods doing very human things that don't actually solve any problems. It's very shallow and immature. Like if there was an all powerful being, he could actually like make a difference in the world and actually solve <laughs> the problems. So him giving himself up to the to become human or whatever kind of is a crap solution that doesn't solve anything like yeah, he gave us dignity he, he, he raised the no, human no, body he, no, he can no. transform oh, us he can share kind with of, us yeah, again yeah, that's, that's garbage exists, hey, Jim, so. can i ask you a question go for it these guys that you know like for these guys at allah and golly sky daddies and all that do you think it's a waste of time to try to decide what's outside of our system because we are a product of the system like of, of either like a subset or or and we're trying to determine what's outside of our set does that make uh, sense no, I mean, because I think we're trying to determine what is in reality, and we are in reality, so we're never trying to determine something outside of our set in that way. Like if we're you... within the time space continuum, we're trying to decide, like, we're trying to figure out if there's something outside of that. Yep. Does that make sense? Like, does it, and we're trying to, is that, is that a futile uh, venture? No, physicists do that all the time. Like, the consensus in physics is that space and time are emergent from things that are more fundamental that aren't space and time. So we do that in physics it's to try and figure out what's outside of space and time. Like, it's not not in any way ridiculous. As long as you have some way that can differentiate imagination from reality, it's perfectly reasonable. Okay, who can I, who can I like, start, to, for an amateur like me, who can I read, like, it could be, like, one person or something I can look to to start reading about this. Like, Sean Carroll. All right, cool. Thanks. Yep. What are some of the best arguments you've heard for God? If there are, so if the, you can say that. the absolute best evidence I've ever heard for God is comes from Hinduism. It's the argument that in the Bhagavad Gita, it predicted the age of the earth was 4.3 billion years old. And that is a damn close prediction. So a book 6,000 years ago, accurately predicting the age of the earth is a very good prediction. That's the best prediction or prophecy I've ever heard in any religion. That's the best evidence of God. But, there's only, but yeah. since it's just one thing, it could most likely just a, a lucky guess. But that's yeah. better than anything else in the other religion, for sure. I mean, I mean Islamic literature has like hundreds of thousands. I uh, know all of the oh. Islamic and all of the Christian prophecies are absolute garbage. They're so ambiguous. They can be interpreted in, as anything. None of them are specific. The Hindu one Tijam literally, Rade. hold up, hold up, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. So the Hindu prediction gives an actual number. It says 4.3 two billion years old it's an exact number it says it this is how old the earth is T-Jump, was it a prediction or a statement uh if it gives the age of the earth that's a prediction i don't know what you mean does it say that it was or does it say that it could have been it says it was yeah. it, it says it was okay. exactly this old it was created exactly so this time okay. do, you think, do you think something but, needs to have a number to be accurate and falsifiable but, but no I had a question. hold up one so, sec so, so one second i'm gonna answer bang first so no it doesn't need to be given an exact number as long as it's precise enough uh the number yeah. is just a way to be essentially the most precise you can be which is why it would be better if you gave an exact number well, and it was yeah. right if that would God be better existed, wouldn't he give you a precise number <laughs> Right, Nico, Nico, wait. Well, I'm saying, like, as long as a prophecy is falsifiable and accurate in a sense, that that will be like a uh, evidence, right? Yes, it would. Unfortunately, all the ones yeah, in the Quran yeah. and all the ones in Christianity so, are vague so, and ambiguous. So I'm saying, so I'm saying, if someone in the seventh century is like says, like, makes a, ge a geographic uh, prediction that. So, so be bang, bang! Time. I literally so have said this like three times. All of the predictions in the Quran, all of the predictions yeah, in the Hadith. Yeah, I'm well, not up, don't interrupt! Don't interrupt! So, all of the predictions in the Quran, all of the predictions in the Hadith, all of the predictions in Christianity—they're all vague and ambiguous. So, they are not predictions. They are not uh, things that count as evidence because they're ambiguous. For a prediction or prophecy to count as evidence, it has to be precise, unambiguous, and specific, and then it becomes quality evidence. predictions. 
Well, if you want to fully study hold up, the hold up, hold up, prophecy, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So it's not about quality predictions, because if you make a prediction that's ambiguous, like I say, there is something in that box. Now, no matter what is in the box, I'm going to be right as long as it's not nothing. So each of the different possible things that could be in the box is its own separate prediction um, because my prediction is ambiguous. So the reason it needs to be specific is it needs to limit the number of possible things that can count as a successful well, confirmation. So if I just predict something that can have a billion different things happen and they all count as a successful um, accounting of whatever my prediction is, then it's not evidence. That's why it has to be specific because for okay. each of the different possible variations counts as an additional prediction you're making. And if one of them is right, the others are all going to be wrong. Okay, I get it. Well, I mean, okay. you, you told me. I mean, you, you interrupted me. Told me not to interrupt you. I was trying to finish. I try, like I'm not. I'm not trying to like, make an argument. I'm just trying to ask you how yeah, you fine. see a, a a a prophecy, right? So I'm I'm saying if someone in the seventh century were to make a claim that, for example, the the land that he's in, right, like the land the, the Arabian Peninsula used to be a um a land of greenery when when at this moment and and long before as as well it was just desert, a desert there was no like rivers there's no like greenery right and he says this land was um um or basically that this land is going to become green again right which which indicates that at the, at at a point in time uh anciently ago it was actually filled with greenery and less which is which is what geography um which is what can um, you can you skip to uh, the skip to my Shorter, shorter. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so, to, so is, I'm, is I'm your argument to say that, that the claim is very accurate and is falsifiable? Wait, wait. So, so is your claim that a guy claimed that this land will become greenery again, which then implies two things: one that it was green in the past, and two that is green in the future. And if that happens, yeah. is that evidence? Is that what your argument is? Yeah. No, it's because it's too ambiguous. So, like no, the. Isn't. Yes, it is. It literally has a time span of infinity. So, infinity time in the future, um, this part of the land could become. Uh, green, which one isn't very spectacular because I'm we know not, that. I'm hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't interrupt. Don't sure. interrupt, Ang. I muted you for this before. Try to just wait until I finish. Um, the fact that it gives no like end time, and it could be any time in the future this might happen. And because it's a phenomenon we already expect that we know greenery does expand under certain conditions, neither of those two things are going to count as evidence because it's too ambiguous, because it just says any time in the future, and two, because it's a, a thing that we already know happens where greenery spreads. So neither of those are spectacular in any way. That's pretty mundane. Like if uh, I predict uh, well, at some I mean, point in time. Know, we do know that after we had the tools to actually know these things, which I'm saying, I'm, 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 my, my, my point was about the, the claim of the past, right? When you said again, I the, think it's the, the again, past. So, known, so right? because we know that so plants, how, how hold up, that? hold up. So if, because we know plants grow and the like forest line recedes and grows all the time, saying that this, this area used to be covered in, greenery or whatever is a mundane claim you would be right about that literally anywhere on the planet you were so that's not no, not no, actual that evidence. that's literally that true, true. Mo mountains mo mountains don't like mountains don't don't have like, yes so all like mountains that, had greenery on top of them before no. they became mountains yes Everywhere on the planet, no, but, there is no land. before they became mountains. I'm saying, if someone would stand, if someone in the seventh century would stand in a mountain, oh say this mountain well, I, I, was so, green. So if you that say, would be, be if, a false hold claim, up, yeah. if you say that this land I'm standing on used to be green, you would be correct anywhere you were on the planet. That is such an ambiguous statement that it can be interpreted to mean before it was a mountain. So because that statement, this land was green, uh, before, whatever. That statement could be applied since it was a mountain or before it was a mountain or before that when it was Pangaea and it was all just one big island. So that statement, this land was green, is so oh, no. ambiguous, it's a bad prediction. It's it not was specific evidence. to the Arabian Peninsula, which is no, actually... It, well, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Is. It literally doesn't matter. Still yeah, ambiguous, indeed. still not evidence. To make it a successful prediction, you got to predict something, one, we don't know yet. Predicting land had green stuff on it is a very mundane thing we already know about. Predicting the age of the Earth is 4.3 billion years ago, that's a very, very good prediction. So, like, predicting land will have plants on it is something that happens all the time all over the world. So if any point in time you predict this part of land will or has had green plants on it, is like predicting that you've had rain hit your head at some point in time in the past. It happens all the time. Predicting the age of the Earth, which has only happened once. Happen. Hold up, hold up. Predicting the age of the Earth, which has only been created once, you get one guess. There's no repeatability. It hasn't happened multiple times. You don't have multiple chances of getting it right. You got one shot. So if you get a good answer there, that's a really good prediction. Predicting something that happens happen, all the though, time. Too. Hold up, bang. 
Again, stop interrupting. I'm just going to mute you. Um, if you predict something that happens all the time, like grass or green things covering a specific land, which happens when it covers and recedes and covers and recedes, happens all over, the, all over the world all the time, you are highly likely to be right about that. Just like if I'm right, you had rain hit your head sometime in the past and sometime in the future. Not a prediction. Too ambiguous. Okay. Something we already know. Not evidence. Yeah, All right, well, that, but then, doesn't then, very ambiguous. Wait, 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 just, wait, wait, just, wait, wait, just wait, wait, respond, please. I'm just saying it doesn't sound very ambiguous to someone who who lived in the seventh century had no tools to actually know any geographical facts such as like you know. They, the all of those things are already new. Or deserts. No, oh, wait, what? No, no. Yeah, there, was no one, there, there was, there was no knowledge. All, of, all of those things were already thing. known. They already knew all of those things. They already knew forests. You could say you say that about math. You could say it's going to equal into something. And hold up. So, Bang, the fact that forests and land goes in and out and changes geography that was already known that was known thousands of years before anybody was in the arabic peninsula we already knew plants did yeah, this where so, where where was that known everywhere it's literally a fact no, of where? Freaking, no, 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 you, no 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 stop, stop 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 where, where is that a... this is this is something muslims do all the time to deflect they want specific examples of very commonly known facts waste of time yes that's kind of racist know, huh no, it's not. It's literally not a race either. I'm so, joking. I'm joking. Stop talking. Please. Holy shit. Stop interrupting. So the fact that we knew. I had history, to get a mod oh get you on mute me. You mute people. Shut up. So um, because we know that land and plants grow and move all the time, saying anybody predicting that is already a known fact. We've known this for thousands of years because they've people have had to move and adjust to these things uh, big before we were agricultural societies. We literally knew this was going to happen. This is a very common fact. Don't need to provide evidence for it. You can just Google it yourself. Anybody else? Okay, uh, biologist, what did you want to say? Uh, what about what about expansion of universe? What about it? In Quran it says that we, we are expanding the universe. Uh... Yeah, what does that say about, does it say dark energy, does it say a specific rate, does it say anything specific, or is it just pretty much ambiguous? Say that until it says something else. Uh, it just says that. So that it doesn't say anything specific, it's not a prediction, it doesn't say how or why, no time frame, no rate, it's just ambiguous. So it says, it, it says the universe was spread like something, that's what it says. So yeah, yeah, super, I super ambiguous. Not a video. I'm not going to look at it. I don't look at DMs. Why? I don't look at DMs. Uh, it's a great video because it uh, shows how dense the prophecies are, actually. Typological all all of the prophecies have been proven to be ambiguous, and that's something that many I'm... scholars have gone through. It's not in any way evidence. Yeah, I'm not talking about uh, formal like prophecies uh, when prophets... Uh, say something will happen rather the patterns in the covenants that repeat right so right. all of the everything in the quran everything in the hadith everything in the bible all of it is ambiguous none of it counts as predictions or science that's wrong. yes it is okay, that's but, the case uh, facts. I, I will prove it did later. you did you actually study uh, yes like, uh, i did scholars, study this like yes. brent petrie or scott yes Hunt. i have studied the scholars on this yes it is ambiguous that's why it's not taken seriously in the field I, I of history specific names because of that i don't uh, need to i don't need to study brent specific petrie. names i've studied the field and the consensus in the field so i know in the field hey, they're team. considered ambiguous well, what about, about the, yeah, but you, you want evidence and I'm uh, sending you stuff, right? So I, I'm already very well acquainted on the field. I'm not interested in researching more ambiguous prophecies. They're pretty debunked pretty easily. So uh, okay, I'm, what about uh, two waters? I, do I not, don't think do, right. do not, if what think, about two waters? Uh, they don't mix together. About the two seas. Hold up! 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 So he asked about the two waters that don't mix. We can literally see that. We literally saw that thousands of years before the Quran. So it's something everyone already knew at the time. No, no one actually reached that point in sea. Yes, they did. We literally have a coastline that has fresh and salt water that we can literally see from standing on the coastline. That was extremely common knowledge back then. It yeah, happens bracket, in rivers in in, in Passau in in Passau in Germany. It happens too. Yeah, it happens all over the world. It's a very common feature yeah, it's that called, it's called brackish water. Look yes. Exactly. Yeah, all the all, all the other the all the other too? like evidence, uh, they are they actually go deeper into science. But if you like, for example, about the mountains, 
that they are no, the Quran, so the Quran that, uh, has no valid science in it. It's nothing but uh, myths of, and legends and, and ambiguities. It's not a way to assess science. Most of it's scientifically inaccurate. Many scientists have gone through this. It's not a source of evidence. It's not real, dude. It's not. It's not. May valid. I? May yeah, I, address I mean, I mean, that we've heard I mean, those kind of uh, those kind of evidence. Hey, Jim, actually, why do people believe this horse poop like the Quran? Hey, 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 like, hey, why do they? Let the other people finish first, because uh, so. Uh, uh, can I can I address something that was brought up earlier? Um, yes, you can go next. Up, uh, Quran, Quran, what would you let let Quran way finish his uh, statement? I was just saying, like for example, about the mountains, that it says that the mountains were put so that so that the earth does not you know shift or shake, and that's exactly the functionality of the mountains, um, which you only no. know if you study the ge ge geology. No, the you mountains the mountains don't do that. They're literally, mountains. literally, mountains do not do that. Um, People but, like this will get a tag in the future, I'm sure. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna, else... I'm gonna, I'm gonna write an article and with references to scientific papers, then we will talk. Like I, I, I don't really have much. Sure, sure, go for it. No, no, but what about he's uh, talking about the about... Titanic plates? Hold he's talking about the Titanic plates rubbing up against each other, making mountains. That's what he's talking. About. I think you mean They're... tectonic. Yeah, what, but, so so but, mountains no, do not just, hold up. It's just my hold, up, hold up, hold up. So mountains do not prevent the world from shaking at all. Their uh, response, they're caused by the world shaking. So literally, that's the opposite of what mountains do. Um, who who is next? Who else wanted to say something? I was talking about earlier. He said something about the expansion. This is from uh, Sarah uh, fifty one forty seven, um, and it's talking about. Um, specifically uh the translation the only translation that says expansion or expander we are its expanders is a 1997 uh retranslation of the quran into english the original translation say nothing about expansion or expander they just talk about the vastness of space or the vastness thereof or vast extent. It says right, nothing but, about but it. Yeah, you're right. What if they you were going against... Bikes, oh. All right, but you're right, what if you were going against somebody that's a Mormon and that has Joseph Smith and has made prophecies and, te and tells you that they have proof of these prophecies coming true? Okay, what are the uh, prophecies? Not such, a, not, lo not such a long time ago. Okay, what are the prophecies? So, well, well, anything that Joseph Smith put on, you know... So, so what I would ask is, what are the prophecies? Please show me the evidence. That's what oh I would ask. Oh, my God, there's... It's so many. I mean, he, I, anytime I he was alive, it was a problem. Every, okay. every holiday was. You're not. You're, literally, you're, you're gonna literally, have to actually show it. Yeah, you're not saying anything. Like, if if someone says they have prophecies that can tell the future, I'm going to ask. Okay, show me. I, I want to see them. Sh sh give me the evidence. That's what I'm going to say. Wait, to there's work. There, I mean, there's work next week. There's work next. Okay, so uh, prophecy. Hold, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not trolling. Hold, hold no, I'm not trolling. Up, hold up. Hold up. So I'm on a job that's going to go for three years. Stop, I know stop, that there's going to be work. Stop. I'm going to mute you. So predictions have to be of something we don't already expect. So if I predict the sun is going to rise tomorrow, that isn't evidence of the spaghetti monster because it's predicting something we already know. So for something to count as evidence of a prediction, you have to predict something about the world we don't already know or expect yet. I'm pouring concrete tomorrow. We ordered the trucks. Okay, we already expect that. Concrete truck could crash. Uh, uh, okay. No, a hundred of over one hundred fifty thousand dollars just just in concrete. We're not talking okay. about the workers. Not, not an argument. We don't. We don't. We don't. Need, we don't. We don't need to discuss concrete. <laughs> Concrete's in here too. And then much. the next day after that, I'm going to tell you it's going to be dry. Shut up, Bart. Okay, so again, Bart, you're just making predictions of things we already know or already expect. We have to predict something we don't know yet. So like I said earlier, the best evidence provided by any religion is the prediction by Hinduism that the world is 4.3 billion years old. That's a very good prediction made 6,000 years ago before we had any idea how old the Earth was. So because it was a prediction something we didn't know yet... Um, and didn't see all over the place. Like seeing someone pour concrete, we see that all over the place. That's not a novel prediction. It's a prediction like saying the sun will rise tomorrow. It's a very commonplace thing. So you have to predict something we don't expect or don't know about the world yet. Uh, okay, you said you said that the mountains appeared as a result of shaking of Earth. So basically, that's exactly that's that's admitting that the the functionality of mountains. No, no so mountains. Earth... Mountains have no functionality. They're not functional. They don't have a function. <laughs> like the only function no, you could say they okay, might okay. have let, would let be. Let me a... use a different word. So, so mountains do stop uh, the the earth from shaking. No, they don't. They literally do not do that. 
they're caused by the uh, collision of the tectonic plates. Yeah, they're, they cause they're and not then stopping they stop. It. No, they, they're a they result. Don't, they of don't it. stop anything. The mountains do okay, not do stop they, things. Okay, do they do they slow it down? No, they nope. have no impact. No. No, uh, uh, in this case, travel... why, don't, why don't why don't mountains grow then? Uh, they, they do. do. Grow. They do. All right. So Joseph Smith prophesized the um, he prophesized something in the Civil War, the American Civil War, the well-known millennial prophecies related remember, to the Civil War. And remember, they knew the mountains were growing in the 10th century. Uh, I just gave you a prophecy. Of, uh, what, what's the prophecy? Well, you said, no, you said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. It doesn't matter. Even if he's a known child, then that doesn't prove he's wrong. So what did he predict about the Civil War? North and the South were going to clash and fight, whatever. Okay, well, that was extremely well known war. because they, they've been fighting for since the beginning of slavery. So, like, that's pretty obvious. So, again, uh, predicting yeah, something but, that's obvious no, no, is no, not no. evidence. Uh, this is the way people live for very, very hundreds of years, like hundreds of right. years. Right. So? They had no idea this would actually Yes, they down. literally did have an idea. Lots of people had an idea. If you look at the time period, the warnings of the Civil War and people talking about it were actually really common from before Joseph Smith. This was a pretty obvious thing that was going to happen, kind of like war between Ukraine and Russia. People were talking about it way before it happened. Yeah, but the day it happened and and um, where it happened, we <laughs> prophesied that. There was rumors about UK and Russia may in the future have a conflict back when I first got a Discord account for the first time ever. So, so yeah, if Joseph Smith actually predicted the day and location of the first battle, that would be great. I, I haven't seen any evidence of that. Oh, someone will scream. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's all about religions, but what about God? Are you atheist? Yes, I'm an atheist. <laughs> What about intelligent design? Is that uh, something happened by accident? Uh, like we intelligently designed phones and stuff. The universe isn't intelligently designed. It happened by deterministic forces. Right. Uh, can I address that too? Because oh. I think the oh. hallmark of intelligent design is efficient simplicity. You do not see that in nature. Nature is complex to the point where everything looks like a, a Rube Goldberg machine of inefficiency and mutation this is the hallmark of incidental uh, haphazard no, design. No, wait, wait. Are, are, are you sure that, you are you, are you sure you're an atheist? If you look no. at, not to mention if you look at the the uh, genetics of every life form on Earth, there's screw ups, mistakes, short outs. Exactly. It's extremely cancer, wasteful. Every one of them. Okay. All right. So, so T. John, is there here? is there any fact that you know that doesn't reference the necessity of God? Potatoes exist. That does not. Reference the necessity of God. <laughs> okay. So my, uh, you have the my, positive uh, belief that there is no God, correct? My telephone yes. exists. Um, I can go with either. Like, I can go with the fact that I simply lack belief, but I'm happy to hold the positive position God does not exist. Okay. Well, and well, how, how did you come to how did you come to that understanding? I mean, by looking at the probability of human beliefs corresponding to reality. Most human beliefs and ideas that they come up with don't correspond to reality. So any belief that a human comes up with that has not provided some kind of justification that it corresponds to reality is rational to conclude it's just an imaginary figment of people's imagination. So does quantum physics. No, quantum physics has evidence. It's like empirical evidence has been demonstrated. Yeah, have you ever no, heard of particle accelerators? No, well, exactly. And you would have to put it in it basically in its own containment. Like you'd have to... You'd have to be the vacuum. What? With, without quantum physics, computers wouldn't work. We need quantum physics to design modern CPUs. I think he's just saying things. No, yeah, he, 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 that's just say like, hold up, hold up. He, that's an argument that most people use that's like, um, we can demonstrate quantum effects both locally in our labs and when we look out in the universe, we can see quantum effects. So we, it's something we can observe in labs and outside of them. Actually, you can, I can demonstrate quantum effects using vacuum tubes, radio tubes. In labs, that would be the in lab example, God. We need in exactly. And... Oh, and that's what I mean. In a controlled area, in a controlled um, environment. What we it's can do not like they're It's not like you're demonstrating it in the, in like forty uh, light years away. No, we can it do both. Corresponds to it. 
So we can yeah, do both. We can demonstrate it in a lab, and we can observe the same effects in the universe 40 light years away. We can observe We're both. We're only yeah. guessing that, that no. in different galaxies, uh, everything is the same as this galaxy. Okay, so no. if you use a tape measure or star in, in, or in a lab, system. if you use a tape measure in a lab, does that mean the tape measure doesn't work when you're building a house outside the lab? That's your argument right now. And yeah, when Wait, it comes repeat to that? Repeat that? When you use a tape measure in the lab to measure something, does that tape measure suddenly not work out in the field if you measure something on a job site? That's that's what your argument sounds like you're trying to say in that if, if it's contained within a lab, the experiment, it doesn't equate to reality outside the lab. Is that the argument you're trying to make? It's a good well, example. I mean, th that's that happens all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> we they test cars in the crash in the crash dummies, right? With the in the, in the and they give um, it a rating, so right. So they, they but then when this car goes out into the real world, um, right? Wait, they wait, actually wait, 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 realize wait. that it flips and Barth. and it because it didn't go through these Barth. regular. It didn't go through every single situation. Barth. So because there's a regular uh, really analogy, threshold, bro. Because Barth. there's a regulation and a threshold. We're only going to find out what once this guy? vehicle is actually on the road. We're talking what about a tape guy? measure. What the fuck? No, the right. way they derive the, the way they derive the theory behind the the tests is by observing reality. They didn't come up with this in a the lab. They observed reality and then they tested things in the lab that work in a lab. So it's not that now we have to prove that it exists in reality. That's how we guessed that it exists anyway. No, I mean, there's bridges that fell in this in this situation. There's uh, faulty it literally materials. Literally doesn't matter. Literally this does not matter. Lab is a lab not reality? So we measure frequencies of light. We measure that when light is of a red frequency, it has a specific hertz rating. And when we look into the universe, we can see light has the specific hertz rating, and then it has the same energy level. We're measuring the energy of light. We're not building anything. It's not like we you build mean bridges. Wind. Who cares? Light has Who cares? It does, literally doesn't matter. So we can measure things in reality here in a lab, and we can measure the same things out in the universe. They don't change because that would mean that the entire thing, like all of the laws of physics just suddenly change over there than over here. And we, so then why did, do we bring hold up, animals hold up, up to the space hold up, station? Hold up, uh, hold, up, jump? hold up. So why do we have, why don't we have them up is there? in the universe. Oh my God, you're so dumb. So, bringing animals to space I'm stations a is a way to test how Just organisms. Mute them. Stop. So, so is a way to test how organisms survive in zero g environments because we can't test that here. We can't go to a z. We can't create a zero g environment here on Earth. We have to go outside of Earth to get away from the giant gravity source, the planet. So, that doesn't make any sense. Because uh, how did how did we come up with a spacesuit? Oh, we actually can't. No, it's going to work. Commercial jets. Yeah, someone who worked in one of the companies who literally designed the original space. It is, it is, it is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking no, when I see loud. Cri cri loud. Christians trying to use science to justify their like metaphysical. It is heartbreaking. Mm. Mm. I'm not using science at all. I actually am against it. Well, I, that's I, even worse. <laughs> you're against science, you okay? No that's even crazier. Not scientism, not science itself, but scientism. You know, people. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not for scientism either. I don't think scientism is correct either. So what? Yeah, scientism is stupid. That's why I study the scientific method. I have a question for the you. Scientism is dumb. Yeah, but uh, you don't have the measurements or the know-how to test anything that these people say. Sure do. Uh, how do you guys infer? Like, like, uh, so how do you guys infer design from like everyday life? Like, if you see like a car, how do you know that's like a design? Like, what what about this tells you that it was designed? Uh, there's no natural process that can do it on its own, and there is a process by which a designer can make it. Therefore, it's reasonable to infer a designer made it. Yeah, but no, but like I'm not. It's not. I'm not making like I'm not saying you. You just see a car like for the first time. Like you see right. something with information and complexity, right? No, oh, so see. information is in things that aren't designed. Information is physical information. Shannon information theory in his paper, his 1958 paper. Information isn't in a car. Um, so when we see a car, we say, is there any known natural process that can make this? If not, is there any known design process that can make this? If the answer to both is no, then you can't conclude either. If the answer is yes yeah. to one, then you can clear whichever one the answer is yes to. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's possible that it could happen by chance, like, like a car could happen by chance. Sure. No. 
Yeah, yes, so I'm saying yes, like, what, what differentiates what, what differentiates us from looking at a car and saying it's a design and looking at DNA and saying it's not a design. Um, cars, DNA has a natural process that we know it comes about by. No, but like the 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 natural process is, is how we is how it functions. Not is not where it came from. No, it's well, not. It's not. We know. Like we know. The, we know a natural process of where it came from, not how it works. Of where it came from. We know it can. It comes from um that natural material that 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 we we know that. But like I'm 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 talking. No, about like the, we we know the... how RNA can form on clay and reproduce and com combine to create reproducing models from non-reproducing models. Yeah. And RNA can make DNA. So we have a natural yeah, process. But we also know that cars could could have that too. Right? No. Cars could come by chance. Yes. Okay, well, I didn't no. say anything about chance there. I said there are natural physical processes that determine these molecules bind in this way to produce these other molecules called DNA. That doesn't exist for cars. There's no there's no part where uh, iron gets smelted into steel and then gets formed into the shell of a car. That doesn't happen. There's no natural process. Have we done enough for studies for that? Have we done enough studies to actually look at that and say like it could? I mean, we I, I don't we, think we don't, I think we don't need to say it could. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it couldn't. Are there any known natural processes that do these things? No. Are there known processes that do these things for DNA? Yes. I think it, I think they could like uh, iron iron ore right could melt be could be melted by some by some lava yes, right and then, like this lava could, could and then all the processes could just happen by chance for like a billion years right and then like uh, a car could function like we could have a functioning car. Yes, it could, but we don't see that happening. Yeah, but we never we didn't see like DNA self replicating. Yes, we, we literally cells, do all of the cells. processes that form DNA. We literally do see them in a lab. That's what we, most we of the, the field. Individual components. No, we literally see the processes that make them RNA forming on clay and forming corpuscles that shape cells and then making self reproducing molecules. We literally see all of this. When okay, you just we, we only uh, when you just it, saying it, that the, the individual... is you will keep making claims. You you will just keep making claims. Like I'm saying, we don't have any evidence no. of no. We literally of, we literally uh, have of, evidence of all, all of, of the components coming together. Like we we can know each individual mole, uh, component and how it how it would form, right? But we don't have we don't have an observation of all those components arranging themselves in such a manner. We we don't we don't have evidence. Of it. Yeah, actually, we have lots of evidence of pretty much all of that. Okay. Uh, no, we don't. So, yes, yeah, we literally do. Common for that. Yeah. So, like biology, and so I have a saying. The world where is it? Their head. Um, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, I find if, you, if you're, if you're willing to, I, I don't think first, you can first, I, I, don't, I don't think maybe hold, that hold makes up, you hold sinful. Hold up, I don't know. hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. New scientists, first life, the search for the first replicator. It goes through every academic paper in the progress of the field of abiogenesis and which ones count as evidence and why. And you can literally read about them. It's very common. Sure. I mean, sure. You I'll could post say that, it. But, yeah. No, no, I'm not saying this. It's literally an article that literally gives you all the evidence. Oh, literally, yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, yeah, yes. literally. How? Uh, all yeah, the they had all they had all the evidence for steady space also, and we and we're yeah. going with the Big Bang now. Yeah. No, okay. they literally how, didn't. So that was disproven. So there so you go. What you, you go what you what you're gonna send is gonna show me how all of the comp we have a visual representation of how all the components right. Form uh, in, no, we in don't need that. We literally don't need that. So again, we have all of the processes. Are you using literally correctly? Doesn't matter. Why would you need Who cares about semantics? Are you literally not using stop, literally? Stop. Correctly. I don't give a shit about semantics. Okay. Don't give me the bullshit about semantics. No, I'm literally. just saying. I don't, care. I don't give a shit. Say literally every few I seconds. Don't just... give a fuck. Shut the fuck up. Semantics get muted. Get the fuck literally, up. Literally, literally every second. So stick to the argument, not the semantics. I don't give a shit about your semantics. So I posted an article that gives you a lot of the evidence that indicates the processes and the novel Where? predictions of uh, how the first life originated, what evidence is that indicates that it was a biogenesis, which is the consensus in all the field. I posted it in the guest text. Okay. And look up okay. the planet simulator. Planet simulator? Yeah. Uh, wait, I, it's, I don't think I don't think this article goes through all the I don't, I don't see all the components being mentioned there and how they're uh, I, I don't think I don't think a 2000 you, you Bang, shut the fuck up. You don't, you don't need you? every single component. You just need a plethora of evidence that shows the processes that did all of the things. And that's what it provides. I don't need to give you every single piece, just enough evidence. Like I don't need to show you every single brick of the pyramids to show that there are the pyramids. I like yeah, that but... before looking though. That's always good. It just it yeah, doesn't but... say that because I know before I've read it it doesn't say that. It doesn't say what? Oh no, the article denial of the article before we've read the article. Sorry, where's the article? Guest chat, guest text, very bottom. And what's the subject? Or abiogenesis and original life.
And the Planet Simulator is fun too. Bang, I already addressed well, your I mean, text chat. It doesn't, it doesn't I, I, need to say, explain how every single component works. It just needs to explain different parts in the process. Again, you don't literally need every single process or every single part. That's what an idiot has. Like, show me how every single uh, part in the car works. Like, I don't need to do that. If I can show you how the engine works, uh, I can show you it moves. I don't need to show you how every single bolt in the car works. Well, you, you would you would because every single every single every single part is essential. Every single part of the no, car is it's would be essential for the car to function. Yes. You don't need to do that. But you don't think every single part of the cell is if is essential for it for it to function? No, there's there's this thing called junk DNA. Do you need the upholstery to, to be present? Okay, do you need the upholstery to be present for you to move I didn't, the vehicle? Well, he's asking uh, he's asking for an analogy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Do, do you, you not, do you hold not up, think hold that up, every hold single? Hold up, hold up, stop, stop, stop. No, there is lots of junk DNA in cells. Not every part of the cell is needed. Needed. There's large portions. That's just. This this term you used is so outdated, like, bro. If there's no junk DNA, bro. Junk DNA. Yeah. The, the point is, the point is, somebody somewhere does know every. To try to get in, in hold on, try to get information from people on Discord about science. When you could go yeah. and study some science and actually look these things up and figure it out, right? Because the That's facts true. are out there, like just. <laughs> huge and massive amounts of facts that back up all these things that you guys yeah, I'm saying there's no, there's no such thing as junk right? DNA yes, this, right. this, this term, this term is not used in okay, academia private. anymore private. Private. this term is not used in academia anymore well, no, you, said the, you said the, uh, the, the name was outdated you didn't say that the process or the thing that he was actually yeah, talking the, about the name entails the, the, the idea or not... the expectation hold right? up, but hold up. One, one second stop stop bad. stop 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 junk DNA was never a term used in academia it's called non-coding DNA. Junk DNA is this pub public term that they use. It was never like a technical term. So junk DNA refers to non-coding DNA. Yeah, but even non-coding DNA has functions. It, it, it's just, it, it just doesn't, it just no one, doesn't actively no one express said, No one said it literally had no function. It obviously okay. does things. Those things don't necessarily produce any benefit in the cell though. No, they do. No, they don't. All these, no, all these, don't. all these, um, um, bang, uh, bang, non coding bang. DNA bang. Right, collectively need, bang. Uh, bang. All bang. need stop. to be bang. bang, stop. No, they don't. The encode project showed that they bind to things. They never actually do anything with the binding. So the encode project that shows that they have function, those functions do nothing to benefit the cell, even though they do something. So no, those functions of binding to certain molecules do not in any way benefit the cell. This is ridiculous. I mean, you know, like since like the past month, like we keep, we keep sorry, month. we keep uh, keep uh, uh this discovering new functions to these things that we don't we thought like, don't have functions. Yes, like, function we, just means biology bind. keeps going on every single function, day. Like, we, you, function you does not mean does have a function. Function does not mean it does a benefit to the cell. Function means it binds to some molecule in the cell. Right. But yes, there are lots of different functions, and that they bind to different molecules and have different effects. That doesn't mean the effects are good or beneficial or useful. We'll go back to the car comparison. You can have functioning things in your car that are not essential to the car running. Oh, there's lots of stuff in a car that doesn't require for making a car oh run. God. Seat belts, the car run with That's the argument. This, is, this isn't semantics. What is this? Stupidity? I can't remember. No, I semantics. <laughs> semantics is. They're not arguing semantics. No, the point no, is that the cell, the life is is... It shows a plethora of inefficient wastefulness that you would that does not indicate design. Design, it, the hallmark of design is efficient. Well, no, so so Bing's argument is is that all of the parts of the DNA have function, and function is needed for the cell, and so any part that doesn't yeah, have, yeah, if yeah. lost, would lead to some like irreducible complexity kind of thing, which is right. false. Like irreducible complexity can be explained by a result of random processes without a designer, just fine. Yeah, and, and the design, they're thinking about things from the top down. The design, uh, the, you know, evolution works from the bottom up, so it's into, uh, incremental changes. So it could have a diminished function or a completely different function with lesser components. But as you, as you add more components, the, the function changes over time and, and, and includes, more, um, includes more function over time. It, 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 it's from the bottom up, not from the top down. It's both top down and bottom up. It's a trade-off. I like the angels from Africa too. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. 
Did you hear and what strike, I said? And strike, and strike, and strike, and strike. Hey, hey did you as hear what strip, I said? As, yep. As, hold up. As silly as the analogy what, Hold up, hold up. What was, what was the guy who asked? No, don't did, did don't you hear just say that it's, bo it's not just bottom up. It's both top down and bottom up. It's a trade off. Um, well, what, what would indicate from uh, top down? Well, epigenetics kind of, I think, would sort of be top down, but it originally started as just bottom up. So the well, top oh, down. Yeah, that's what, I'm, uh, I don't think I'm describing. Yeah, yeah I think um, he, he's, he's bringing up a slightly different topic. But yes, there is top down selection in things in genes like sexual selection, epigenetics. Um, those kinds of things do have an effect. Uh, the environmental effects, natural selection. And, yeah. But yeah, not just top down, level, top but... down in the way he was referring to it was like a god did the designing is what he meant. Yeah. Wow. And... Well, there are there are systems level processes that actually affect molecules I, I would, that then I, affect genes. I would so love to see how our physiology, uh, for example. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just I would love to see how creationists explain ERVs. God did it. Is that recreational vehicles? No, endogenous retrovirus. I know. Like it's it it it's clear indication that things are uh, you can't pass down endogenous retroviruses without evolution. Like it, it has to be well, passed down genetically. That's not so technically it's possible that the virus uh, infected multiple species at the exact same point in their DNA. Uh, hundreds that's the of same times. exact chromosome. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the that's exact like same so point. Impossible. Yeah, it's pretty impossible, but it, it's 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 not logically impossible. It's just super improbable. Yeah, it's like it's like trying to argue that. But yeah, it's the car making itself. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say the car making itself might be more probable. <laughs> Actually, I think it would because the DNA is three billion base pairs long or whatever, and so the probability yeah. of uh, 10 different or 100 different species getting the same ERV in the exact same location of those 3 billion long base pair um, is pretty... It is basically almost zero. Yeah. Is it... Um, T-Jump, I listened to you talking about it the other day, and the only analogy I could get was like a tattoo on a DNA cell or a part of a chromosome that stays through the whole genetic life of that species. Is that right? Uh, what? Say that again? So, like, a the idea, the only idea I can't with trying to understand it is it's like, it affects the... Oh, ERVs? Are you talking about how to understand ERVs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the RVs, yeah. Uh, the retrograde viruses. It's it, it's like the analogy <laughs> I had, had is, was something like a part of a cell, a part of a chromosome got kind of tattooed and it, through the whole lifespan of that creature or that species, it's in the same place in every offspring of that original species. Uh, yeah, so, so an endogenous retrovirus will inject its DNA into like a sperm cell or an egg cell, and then every single one of the kids will all have that same ERV. So your DNA will start to reproduce, and the same injected DNA will be in every single one of the different cells now. And so and it, would be in the, it would be in the specific place in yep. that species that would only have... All of, all, all of the offspring. So all of, all of the generations of that species and any future species that come from the parents who got the ERV will have the exact same DNA be replicated in the exact same spot in their DNA chain, no matter how many species down the line you go. As long as they still have that segment of DNA, it will be reproduced in the same order because DNA is just duplicate copies of the same thing. And so you will find the exact same ERV in the exact same location in all of the offspring and relatives of the parent. Yes. You can't really get past the evolution with that, really, can you? Yeah, and the bigger thing is one ERV isn't too bad, but there are thousands of them. There are thousands of these yeah, little tiny share... blocks that sh that are shared between every single species all over the planet. You can find like 10 specifically for just one group of mammals and 100 for uh, chimpanzees or whatever. And so each different species has dozens and dozens and dozens of these for each of their different lineages. Um, and so it, it's it, explaining all of them would be essentially impossible. Does it do? Does it show stuff on gated off communities, like kind of like islands that have never been really populated yep. by other species? Yeah, so, like the species Galapagos? in Australia. Galapagos, yeah, yeah, marsupials and shit. Yeah, Australia. Poisonous platypuses. That why do mammals have poison? Yeah, <laughs> or lay eggs. It's a, it's a, it's a. Yeah, egg laying venomous that. mammal. <laughs> uh, I got a question for you, Tom. Sure. Um, one of the, from what I, from what I've seen, one of the biggest stumbling blocks when arguing like with creationists and, um, even like anti-vaxxers and stuff is 
the idea that science and the scientific community has become really politicized and like very, very biased. And it's really hard to like prove otherwise. It's kind of just an assertion, but it's hard to show that it's not. Do you have any ideas how we could like kind of overcome that? Uh, yeah. So science and the way scientific progress works is that scientists all hate each other and they're wanting to prove everyone else wrong so that they're right. So they publish a piece of paper, uh, a document, a paper, whatever. Somebody else publishes a paper and they do everything they can to prove the other person wrong because they want them to be right and, them to be, and the other person to be wrong. And the other person is doing everything they can to prove your paper wrong. And so the political biases make no difference here to scientific papers. The ones that win are the ones that none of the other experts can prove wrong. So no one cares about bias here. It's like, you want to publish a paper, and if no one else can prove it wrong, you win. No one cares what their biases are. There are no biases here. You can't bias out uh, scientific progress. Like, everyone hated the idea that space-time could bend, but he won. He got all the credit. Everyone else was trying to prove him wrong and couldn't. So if, if your entire methodology is everyone's attacking one another and the only one that can't be disproven wins, biases make no difference because the whole process is to say... My bias is that I'm right and that you're wrong, and your bias is that you're right and I'm right, and I'm wrong. And the scientific methodology being combative and everybody proving everybody wrong is the way to eliminate bias from a methodology. Totally. I just wonder yeah. if there's like a way to kind of show that. Because like, like everybody knows who Neil deGrasse Tyson is because he's vocal and he's online and stuff. I wonder if um, what it's going to take is, sorry, is like the real like kind of eggheads, you know, like uh, that don't really want to be, um, that don't want to be in the public eye. Is, is there a way to like kind of convince them to, to do that? You, you'd have to pay them enough money and they'd do it. Right, right. You're the guy that won the Fields Medal. Because it, it seems like it could be today's age where like everything important is, or interesting is either like streamed or on tape or whatever um that if people and if it's not like available to like watch on youtube people just have a hard time believing it uh i mean if the goal is to convince people i think the best way to do that is um usually just changing making progress so the, the society that makes the most progress is going to have the most people who are the least likely to be delusional um so even in societies that like america where there's a big a large religious community who, who reject a lot of stuff they still have a higher amount of, amount of people who accept most science than countries that have much worse science education so as long as you just keep making progress scientifically people will eventually accept it and it'll become second nature like People pretty much always accept the world, the world is round now and they didn't used to before. So as long as we keep making progress scientifically, it's eventually just going to change slowly on its own. Right. Most Christians are do believe in evolution. Where do you see religion in 100 years' time? Um, diminished, but still probably more popular than atheism. I think it's going to take a few hundred years or... Once atheists essentially adopt a view of morality that is more intuitive and accurate than the Christian model, then then it'll that'll be a big hit to religion. So kind of like Darwinian evolution was a big hit to religion. Um, if we discover a secular model of morality that we accept, that'll be a big hit to religion, and that will be probably the final thing to start making atheism a more uh, accepted view. I think the metaphysics. I think that I think the metaphysics are going to become more sophisticated, and be a kind of replacement as to religion per se. So that you'll be able to you'll be able to understand a Christian metaphysics as opposed to say uh, an atheistic or um, idealistic one. Hey, Jill, you're hot, Viking. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, baby. Oh, thank you, little baby. Bro, are you my little kitten? <laughs> Continue. Let Let me know what do you think? What do you think that moral structure would look like? Um, I think my model of objective morality captures it the best. I think it's that the objective moral standard is a perfect world that is one where it's impossible to force anyone to do anything they don't consent to doing. I think that's the objective moral standard, and where we will 
aim towards in moving our technology. Are you a libertarian? No. I have a question, TJ. So could there be something written in the laws of nature that that kind of utopia is it eventuates something negative like sort of like letting someone eat their their favorite sweet cake all day long eventually becomes evil and hor- horrific right so could that be something that could confute your idea uh, what okay so you know uh in any kind of uh, conception of a perfect situation in society or perfect food if you have too much of it it becomes the opposite of perfect it becomes hell your favorite meal all day long for example it would become horrible so could it be the fact could it be the case that in written in the laws of nature you could never have a kind of utopia that you're talking about because too much of a good thing is too much no so my world is essentially our world plus an extra law of physics is impossible to force people to do things they don't consent to doing um that's the only difference so like you can okay so you think that law exists out there sort of yeah okay and and then second just to follow up so i know a little bit about your conception of morality you do think that it's either a particle or a field yeah something like that like a higher order emergent property of some kind and so what do you ha- have you worked out a kind of mechanics? I know you're not a physicist, but like any kind of dynamics that could help to run an experiment to discover this field? Uh, no, my predictions are more like that. We will see the same patterns of morality in other species, like other aliens. If we discovered them or AIs, once they get invented, that they'll um, discover us the same patterns in morality that we feel are there. And so they'll eventually lead to the same conclusion of this best of all possible worlds I'm describing. But we should be able to identify it somehow, so like with the yeah, scientific Yeah, eventually. Device. I have no idea how to do that. Hey, T Jump. Hey, what do you think about the God is a superorganism around the planet idea? A uh, superorganism? I don't know what that means. Uh, did we talk about this yesterday during that big chat thing? He's wearing cape, yeah. blue tights. Uh, no, no, no. He's wearing the flesh of its believers. <laughs> Occupying their minds, not but worms, but but worms. Are you are you good? Okay, never mind. No one understands what I'm saying. Your philosophy is too deep for us. We can't we can't take this anymore. Okay, well, yeah. too smart. Damn, I'm too damn smart. Never, for yeah, the Superman hypothesis, man. So I'm more of a Dragon Ball Z thing. Yeah, I hear you. So what's this room about? Is this room about something special? I I agree. It's interesting because I agree with T-Jump in a way, but he's giving us a universal T-Jump. The only thing he's doing and where we would disagree is that he's putting a material to it. He's he's saying it is material. Whereas I agree with T-Jump. I'm just saying that, or I would just believe that it's in, it's in, it would not reduce physics in principle. Somebody's breathing hard into their microphone. Oh, bad. But I want you guys to notice that T Jump is giving us a sort of Platonism with his moral. Uh, well, Platonism says specifically there are Platonic objects, and I'm, I don't think there are Platonic objects. No. Well, I would just say to that that what Plato offers is this transcendent reality. Now, yours is not that per se because you don't believe in a transcendent reality. You just believe that that thing is material. So it's still within this Aristotelian materia uh so plato and aristotle are different things um but so plato says there are platonic objects platonic objects are a specific kind of abstract object which i don't think exists like i don't think there are platonic objects so i'm not nothing i said is a kind of platonism it's a kind of moral realism that that's me and plato are both moral realists but i'm not in any way platonic okay so here's here's what i mean i'm just drawing an analogy the reason I don't think you are a Platonist is because the Platonic objects you're talking about, these universals, so, so to speak, uh, these forms with the, a capital F, would be transcendent, which means they're not material, but they're informing the material reality. So again, I said there are no Platonic objects. So I, there are no Platonic right. objects in my model. No, I, I agree. I, I know you are not a Platonist. I'm just drawing an analogy because Plato is saying that there's something transcendent from this material reality that is informing it. What you're saying is that that thing that is goodness and and perfection is in the world. 
in an Aristotelian way, because Aristotle brings us back to this corporeal world. What you're saying is that that force of perfection is in the world as a material or a field. And so what I'm saying is that you're kind of shoehorning in a kind of universal, but at, in, in this world uh, as a material. Yeah, so none of that made sense. Like all the evidence of universals is that they're laws of physics. Like the only the things we have that are the best qualifiers of the universals is are quantum fields. Quantum fields, right. yeah. So so, yeah, saying, no, so if I think there's a universal of morality, the best candidate is it's probably also kind of like a quantum field. Yes, yeah. That's why you're not a Platonist, because you bring it right. back into this material reality. Y yeah. But I'm saying it's kind of, I mean, I can see an analogy here to where you're giving us a, a perfection, but you're, the only difference is that you're bringing it into a field or a part. Right, right. So the similarity is, is that we're both moral realists. That's the similarity. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey, T Jump. What do you say about people who argue for uh, for the existence of God, like um, as a mind, as a thinking agent, um, who exists outside of time? Because my impression was that um, a thinking mind, right, is necessarily contingent on causality, on a linear time. So I was just wondering how how does that it, if that makes any sense to you, like that argument, because in my, in well, my, so I would disagree that it's necessarily contingent, but I'd say there's no evidence that there's a mind outside of time. And so I'd say saying that a mind is outside of time is kind of like saying there's a pineapple outside of time and they both have equal evidence. Um, and so I'd say there's no evidence that a mind exists outside of time, but I wouldn't say it's logically incoherent or necessarily impossible. I would say there's mind. Mind, mind has to be in time because thoughts happen in time. Well, again, I would just I'd say, say that. Not spatial. I'd say again the same thing. It's there's no evidence they can exist outside of time, but there's it's not logically necess necessary for them to be inside of time. So you you think I'm just going a little too much into it? It should just stop at can even an object exist outside of time? Well, no, I'd say do you have any evidence? Like that's what you should reply. You shouldn't say it's impossible. Like it's it's possible, sure, yeah. but there's no evidence of it. So because there's no evidence of a mind existing outside of time. That would be like, right. if I said there was a mind outside of time, that would have equal evidence to saying there's a pineapple outside of time. So their idea that a mind outside of time created the universe is equally as rational as saying a pineapple outside of time created the universe. But, but don't forget, though, that a pineapple is a different category than a mind. So no. a pineapple is... Oh, well, hold on, hold on. Let me just finish this. T-Jump thinks because... Well, because T. Jump thinks that minds are material, well, no, it would no, no, no. For him so, be... so that's that's not part of the argument. So the argument here is that there is equal evidence for a mind outside of time as there is for a pineapple outside of time. It doesn't matter if minds are physical or non-physical, spatial or non-spatial. Okay. The evidence yeah. that we have, regardless of your worldview, is that the evidence minds can exist outside of time is equal to the evidence that pineapples can exist outside of time. Yeah, that's true. right. Yeah, uh, but I specifically went further with the argument and entertained it that far because they always try to respond with like, oh, well, you don't know what can exist outside of time. Maybe it's some ethereal matter of some kind. Right. I would, just, I would agree with them and say, yes, you're right, which is exactly why pineapples could exist outside of time just like you think mines could. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I, I just entertained it further to the point where I was saying, well, even if there is some type of matter that can exist apart from causality, even the idea, the concept of thinking is necessarily contingent on that's uh, wrong. Temporal space. That is definitively wrong. You cannot say thinking is contingent on temporal space. That is wrong. Okay. There's no logical wrong? entailment that thinking requires time. There could be some other kind of a medium outside of time that can allow for thinking. So like time is a specific kind of a field in physics. And so if there's a different field in physics that can essentially accomplish the same thing, but isn't time, then you can do thinking outside of time. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, I don't know. This is a, I would just say that here's what I believe. I think that an object like a pineapple is both spatial and temporal. It's bound by space because it can be measured spatially. Uh, it's bound by time because it changes. 
a mind I don't think is bound by time. I don't think is bound by space, but it is bound by time because I can tell you to think of flowers. You will, and then time will be ticking as well, you are, and then there'll be a time that you stop thinking. Of flowers well, well what, whether you else. think oh, it is or not, well, well, hold up, hold right. up. So, so whether you think it is or not isn't evidence. So you'd have to provide some evidence to think that, in any way, minds are are not bound by the same things pineapples are bound by. So, what reason do you think minds are not bound by the same things pineapples are bound by? I don't have any positive evidence, but I would just say. It see, and you know, I wouldn't know how to to prove this, but it seems like it would be impossible to give a spatial parameter in centimeters to a thought, or a thought in grams, or something like that. Well, we, we actually can. So, if you Google the weight of a thought, there is actually an equation for that. But um, the fact that it's intuitive to you doesn't really seem to work, because, like if you said, what is the um, spatial limitation of a pineapple? Because pineapples have different shapes and sizes. At what point does it become a pineapple? Like you couldn't actually give a precise definition of when an object becomes just a plant to specifically a pineapple um, because it's the, called the problem of identity. So there's no way to give an exact definition for either of those things. But... No, no, no. That's different though. I, I would say that you could, whatever that object is, whether it's a tiny pineapple looking thing, uh, you could still give it a, a measurement of it, dependent on what your how accurate or sophisticated your measurement device right. is. We can we that, can that, measure its weight and size and whatever. But at what point does it go from a seed to a pineapple? Like when is the exact exact moment that a seed becomes a pineapple? Well, let's just say any any corporeal object, embodied object, a classical object, that thing you can deduce with a measuring device with spatial parameters. I don't see that you could do that with a thought in well, principle. Again, we can literally, that's literally a thing. We literally do that. Just Google the weight of a thought, but. But could you describe how they did that? Yes. Google are they the weight using of a electrochemistry? Thought. I mean, because that's not a thought, you know what I mean? Thoughts are made of energy. Energy uh, can be translated into mass with E equals MC squared. So you can literally translate yeah. to the mass of a thought. Thoughts well, the, are, the, 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 hold on. Let's, on we have to be careful. Uh, let's be careful here. The electrochemical chemistry that's transmitted through neural firing, those are exhaustively described in terms of physics, and there's nothing in them that is the thought. It's just physics. No. So all of the evidence in neurology, psychology, cognitive science is that those are the thoughts. So that, no, it's that they correlate to the thoughts. You no, that, that. that's no. The consensus is those are the thoughts. So the consensus is is that there is no extra non-material part of thoughts. Consciousness is a part of the material. It's literally the material thing. There. Could, yeah, thoughts the only, are, the, are the label we put on brain states. Thought, yeah. The, the, yeah. Well, I would say thoughts is what happens associated with brain states. It's mm. not just a label. It's your primary datum of all of reality. Right. Your conscious experience is literally a physical thing in your brain. Well, it's, I would just say as far as they know, and no one's won the Nobel to establish what you just said, even if it's consensus, it's, it's just not – right now a theory there is not even one no, theory of consciousness it's a physical physical brain state well, that's, they're just they're just correlated that's no, 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 i mean that's no, no, no. as far no. so, as you can so, go with so it so you can never prove anything in science science is only based on correlation and evidence and all of the evidence indicates it's just physical there is zero evidence there's anything other than physical there nothing that indicates that it's all physical that's all of the evidence indicates that uh, so it's kind of like yeah, like literally, literally all of it. But so it's like evidence of the flat Earth. Like, like the position of idealism is essentially no different from the evidence of the flat Earth. That, that's how bad. Well, it is. That's, here's, right. here's, like, here's all I here's all I would say to that, and then we can move on because this will be the hard problem debate forever. The in in the electrochemistry and action potentials and thresholds reached of that are that are neural networks. There is no such thing in, in those physics as redness. There's only something associated with redness and correlated to it, but there is no redness in any of those physics. Right, right. And so what you I'm saying say, is, is literally all of the evidence says you're wrong, and it's literally there. Well, no, no, no. I mean, there's not one shred of evidence that nope. shows us again, redness all from, of any, the of evidence, these, from again, any of these firings. All firing of the evidence is that it's all physical stuff in your brain. All of the evidence indicates that. There's nothing that doesn't indicate that. Nothing. Wait. No, no, that's wait. just not. Wait, no, that's wait, literally, wait. literally the case. Like, there's no evidence of any alternative here. That's it. That's the only option you have. The, Wouldn't the only o the evidence, first of all, the only evidence is that there's a strong correlation, but there are some no, 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 no. times no, again, when those correlations okay. break down and go the other direction. No, there's you no, know that, there right? are no, there is no case where it goes the other direction. There is no other direction. That's not true at all, dude. Again, <laughs> that is just not again, true. I can pull of, up so, so, so and post every them. single novel prediction ever made indicates 
The mind is physical brain stuff. There is nothing, no papers, I'll, I'll give you one. no predictions, I'll give you, I'll no give evidence you one. I'll give of you anything one. else. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what is the you other evidence? You want your evidence? black swan? I'll sure, give you the it. black swan. Go ahead. So the so the prediction was that as you are having um, intense uh, self-reported experience, you will see neural activity that's associated with that. So the more intense mm -hmm. the experience, the more excitation of the neurons. Well, um, that's through, not that's not actually a prediction made by anybody in that's literally the opposite of any prediction made by anybody who knows anything about neurology. So like epilepsy, you have lots of neural activity, zero conscious experience. So that's literally not a thing anybody who is competent in neurology would make. Well, no, no, no. Uh, so here here's what the uh, and I'll have to pull up the study. But the but the idea was I've that literally seen that study. I know exactly what you're saying. They're idiots. No one in neurology Come makes on, a correlation. Don't call them, no, no, don't stop, call stop. Them listen, idiots. listen. No one in neurology makes a correlation between the amount of brain activity and the vividness of the conscious activity. Those are literally two different things. Your brain, when it's going through an epileptic seizure, it has more brain activity than any other state. It's just a bunch of random firings. That does not equate to higher levels of conscious experience. Consciousness is a specific process in the brain, and you need a specific set of patterns in the brain to produce vividness of consciousness, not just more firings. No one who is a competent neurologist says that if you have conscious experience, the more vivid the conscious experience will be associated with more random brain activity. No one no, no, says no. that. No, no, no. See, you've just, shoe, you've just shoehorned random. I wasn't saying random, and nor would they say random. It, okay, it, it is so, the case that it, it is the case, for example, if you give someone a, a stimulus, a visual stimulus, that they, they, do, ex, they do expect certain excitations right. that are proportionate to that stimulus in the occipital lobe yes. in the primary visual cortex. Yes. So, so I'm with you on that. Um, I'm just saying that that correlation is not always there. Yes, it and, is. And, the, and you, you're probably yes. familiar with the psilocybin research that I was going to, going to cite. Yeah, the studies where they found uh, less activity in the areas of the brain still correlated to high levels of uh, stimulus in the conscious conscious experience or whatever, but that's again not something we wouldn't expect. Most of what your brain does isn't consciousness. Well, I would just say that if that's the case, then th it would be impossible to falsify the no. neural correlate. Because if if let me just let me just put, finish this real quick point, ten seconds. If it's the case that you can provide a stimulus and watch neural activity excite, and then if you provide a stimulus and it cools down then you you've got it both ways you you can say hey the cool down means excitation uh, intense experience and also the excitation means it so that it would be impossible to falsify that no you just have to find a way to differentiate which ex which excitations correlate to consciousness and which excitations have subconscious or unconscious effects like it doesn't doesn't mean it's impossible to to falsify it just means that excitations aren't the thing that corresponds to consciousness it's just a thing like if i said um all all roses are flowers, but not all flowers are roses. All excite or all consciousness is excitation, but not all excitation is consciousness. This is not. There's nothing about do, this that's even surprising. Do you agree? Do you agree with Kant uh, when he said we have to be extremely sensitive and careful to making category errors? Are you very sensitive to category errors, like saying that a voltage or networks of voltages are thoughts per se? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. So that's what the evidence so, indicates. Well, no, no. The, again, the evidence gives you the correlation. No, no, no. I again, I, you keep, you keep saying correlation. that, but that just shows you don't understand science. In science, there is only correlation. You can never prove causation. So all of the correlation means that hypothesis is the one that has the evidence. It's the one that's correct or has the most likeliness to be correct. You only get correlation. So but, all the correlations in that field are the only ones that have the evidence. If, if that's the case, then why have, hasn't the people who are studying consciousness and giving us those tight correlations, winning Nobel prizes for solving the hard problem. Uh, because the hard problem isn't something that needs to be solved for a Nobel prize. Like the Nobel prizes are not given for that kind of stuff. Like what you're saying is n meaningless. Like their neurologists are winning Nobel prizes all the time. That's a thing. Uh, somebody breaking up? God for 20, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I can't hear anybody else. Oh, you uh, can't hear anyone test else? One, two, test one, two, test one, two. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay. Hey, he said I, he, uh, I pinged you a DM there. He jumped. Uh, you have to ping on yourself, I guess. What? Why, why um, are you the, sending uh, a DM? The bot. I, I sent you the ping there. Why did Here, you here's what I would say to that T-jump. If you could give an, if a neuroscientist could give us an equation for the experience of redness, he would win the Nobel Prize. But because of psychology and the mind and how variable it is and how well, again, that doesn't matter. Like, it like it literally doesn't matter. Like what you're saying is incoherent. If we have correlations that indicate this, all of the evidence indicates this. Do we need to prove this? No. Like all of the evidence indicates dark energy is there. No one's won a Nobel Prize for winning dark energy yet. Does the evidence yep. indicate it? But yes. But you know they're looking for it, right? Yes. You know that right now they yes. have a spectrometer looking for it. And that's what yes. I'm giving you. I'm saying that they need a spectrometer for consciousness because they're going They're going to we, want to we win don't, that We Nobel. don't need that yet. Yes, we're looking for one. We are trying to solve it. That's a real okay. thing. Okay, that's we don't the whole need, point. So, so, so my argument was is all of the evidence indicates this is the case. There is no evidence that indicates it's not the case. The fact that we don't have a spectrometer for consciousness yet doesn't change the fact that all evidence indicates it's physical. So, so you keep, you keep objecting. Oh, well, you haven't proven it yet. We haven't proven dark energy yet either. All of the evidence is dark energy is real. So any rational minds can be like, yeah, dark energy is real. Cause here's all the evidence indicates it. So any rational mind and consciousness is going to be like, yeah, all the evidence indicates consciousness is a physical process and there's no other evidence of anything else. So is it, is, have we proven it? No, but we don't need to. We have all of the evidence. I would say that dark energy, I mean, the models are that the models for dark energy, I think, are very tight and very good, obviously. Uh, but as far as it being uh, a, a particle or a new field or a new field uh, form of gravity remains to be seen. And there could be somebody that comes along and, and upsets the apple cart. Sure. Always. But that's what we would need evidence for that. Like all the evidence is it's real. And there's several. What's her name? Uh, Sabine Hofstetter. Like she's saying that dark energy is fake or something. Yeah. So, well, she, she, yeah, she, so, so, so the point is, is that you can, you can go against all of the evidence, but it's not the rational thing to do. So the rational thing to do in the case of the mind is say, yep, all the evidence indicates it's physical. That's the rational conclusion is that it's physical. But the, the, I just, it just appears, I mean, it just seems clear that that's a category error because we know what physical is. We know what the materials what? are, per, uh, like in toto, in totality, wait, wait, exhaustively so exp describe a physics. And explain none, of that that is a, none of that is a feeling or it's or anything like that, which is not well, something well, that... So, so go, go, back, go back, go back, go back, go back. So... There's, you seem to be making the assumption that we know everything about all of the physical stuff and none of that entails some other property we've discovered through consciousness. That seems to be your argument. Um, well, one, I mean, physics is what it is. It's described as mass, amplitude, mm -hmm. wave, charge. Well, none no, no, of that no. is... So, so, again, we could just discover new things about physics that entail those things. You, you seem to have placed a stopper and said we've discovered everything about physics there is to know, which is clearly false. So, well, no, no. Well, well, that seems to be like the implication of your argument. Mind is a particle. So, so it seems like the implication of your argument is, is that there's literally nothing else we could describe, discover about physics that would solve this problem. And that seems obviously wrong. Well, no, I mean, you're giving us the promissory note, and I'm saying it could go the other direction. Perhaps physics right. has its limit, and we, then we have to look to other things to... Let's just say this, t -Jump. What if well, there wait, wait, is... That was, I, wanted to, I want to address what you just said there. So, yes, I have induction of science always working and physical stuff always working and always giving us the answer. So for it's materials. reasonable. So it's for reasonable. material, t -Jump. No, 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 stop, stop. For everything, for literally everything that we've ever discovered, science works, physical stuff works. It's the one that works. So if we have an unknown problem saying this same process is going to be the one that solves the problem is again the rational solution because no other method ever invented has ever done a damn thing so yes going with this method is the rational thing to do Here, here's how i would respond yes i agree with that and that's why you get technology because you can take these objects and you can deduce all of these physics and math from and that allows you to make predictions about those objects but then there seems to be a cut in reality and things that do not reduce to those physics. Wait, wh wait if, where is this now, cut? Uh, well, okay, I, I already described consciousness. Well, so, so here's something my, outside my, of it. Uh, 
Well, one sec. That, that's a good this. point. That's a good point I wanted to address. So it seems like you're making an argument from ignorance. Here's the stuff we understand, which is the science stuff. As, as are you. As are you. Remember, you no. said, you said, give us time. Give us time. That's not an argument from ignorance. So again, it seems like you're making the argument that, so we know about the physical stuff, and then here's something we don't know about consciousness. And there's these properties in this consciousness thing that we don't know about in the physical stuff. Therefore, we need to make up an entirely new ontology that it can't be any of the unknown physical stuff. I would I, I myself am open minded. Once we get the T jump particle for morality or consciousness, I'm in. I'm a physicalist that day. Mm -hmm. But um, what I'm saying is, what if there are things that are immaterial? In that's fine. Cosmos? That'd be to that'd be totally that, possible. If, if, but if that's the case, T jump, you're not going to find it with physics. Right. That's part of well, it, totally It'll fine. point in that's the fine. direction. Yes, yes, it'll I, get you, I agree. It'll whoa, get you far whoa, enough. Well, yeah. I agree. We would not be able to find it with physics, but unable to conclude that it is in fact immaterial and not just an unknown physical thing, you would need some new methodology to indicate this yes. new ontology. You Fair wouldn't enough. just be able Fair to enough. say, well, we haven't found it in the physics yet, therefore it's a new ontology. Precisely. You need, you need some other yeah. methodology to actually get access to this stuff to demonstrate it's real. That's essentially totally equivalent well, to science. And yeah, right, okay. and one sec, one sec, one sec. So we'll end me, on that agreement. We'll end on that agreement. I don't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To That's to me, I don't see that other methodology. All I see people who are like idealists saying is that well we haven't discovered in the physics yet and it's never going to be discovered in the physics therefore there's a new ontology and I'm like well no that's just an argument from ignorance you need to provide that other methodology to indicate this stuff not just say it hasn't been found by the physics yet well they would point toward quantum mechanics right and legged inequalities and the fact that since well, 2003 with Leggett's paper it seems as though pretty much um, a, a, a consensus that down there, quote unquote, at the quantum scale, materiality sort of ceases to be, and now we're in a no, realm of no, it's still physics. So it's still it's still physics well, it, stuff. It's it well well hold on. It's only physics once measured. Prior to no. that, it's not there. It's remember, still... hold on. Let me just let me just make this point. This is very very important. Whatever that thing is prior to measurement, there there can be said to be no momentum, no mass, nothing until it's measured. Right, and but it's they, still they're, they're not saying that it has that. We just don't have an instrument to find it. They're saying it's literally massless. It's no, literally. No, 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 I don't momentum. think you understand it. So, so in physics, those are still physical things. Those are still physical material fields. The fields themselves are material things. The quantum fields are literally things that exist in a vector space. They are physical things. But they're not saying physical things are gone. They're just saying matter, as in a thing that is produced as a fluctuation in the space-time field, doesn't exist because it's a emergent property of other physical space-time fields or other physical fields. So the physical fields are still physics; it's still material fields, if you call a field a material. So it's not, in any way, some new special thing. And there's no evidence that it in any way relates to consciousness. But the fact that these things in physics aren't space-time because space-time and matter are all results of um, emergence of other fun, more fundamental fields doesn't mean they're not physical they're still physical natural wait, wait, stuff. wait don't say space-time because now you're in the classical world there is no time there is no time no, uh, space-time and matter the, are, are emergent fields from in, other more but, fundamental fields but t-jump in quantum mechanics there is no time derivative it goes both ways. In classical mechanics, now we're in the time. No, so time is literally a field that literally exists. It doesn't matter if it goes both ways or not. It's still a field. Well. And it's an emergent field from other okay. fields. I don't uh, No, I don't. Uh, time is not. A, time is described in. If you want to get a confusing answer from physicists on what time. Space time is the fourth, no. the fourth dimension of space time. Space time is all a single field. Some disagree. I mean, this is hotly debated right now. Is time? That's some believe, like Lee Smolin, that that Lee Smolin believes that time is fundamental and space is emergent. Yes, and then he gives I understand that, but the consensus in physics is that space and time are both emergent. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but let me just let me just take us back down to the quantum scale real quick. Um, so what I do think that quantum mechanics does is it. It, it does suggest that there is a real world of objects that is superior primary because as George Ellis and Barbara Drossel have shown that quantum system cannot come into being come into classical physics unless but for an a classical object existing either primarily or with it simultaneously. And all that is to say is that that quantum wave system that you're talking about, that field, never does any. It can't collapse itself. It's 
it's not allowed for in physics for that wave to collapse itself. This is why we have many worlds, for example, and they say the wave never collapses because they know the physics doesn't allow that wave to collapse. Well, the wave can collapse but, from lots of different the, interactions but, with but other the waves. But the wave does, yes, the wave collapses only when it comes into contact with the classical object. It never collapses outside of that. Yes, and it so can. To me, wait, the wave can collapse yeah. in, in from interactions with other waves. So like it doesn't need to collapse with an interaction, like virtual particles would be a great example of this. They don't interact with anything in the natural world. They just pop into existence. That's perfectly fine. They, they're interacting with a different field. So the particles don't need to hit a classical object to collapse. They can collapse in lots of different ways. If, if it's a particle that has a position in it, Vir virtual the only particle. way to know that. Virtual particles, they don't have a mass or a position until they collapse. Okay, well then they're not collapsed then. Right, and then they collapse, and we've shown they come into existence empirically with the Casimir effect. So they don't right. do that. If if they if we can show their position, that means per force that. They oh have my God, you're not contact. understanding. So virtual particles don't interact with anything; they pop into existence at random with no interaction at all with anything in the real world on their own. Casimir okay. effect. That's... Google Google Casimir effect. Well, if if they don't have a position, then they're not collapsed. No, they collapse, and then they have a position, not before. I see. Hopefully, this is a nice string theory. Well, Casimir effect is like literally something we've demonstrated in a lab. It's just virtual particles. So string theory would just be one of the interpretations to try and explain it. The Casimir effect is a literal empirical experiment. That's it, objects. Is there a mod here who can give mod powers to people? Like, uh, Jack, Jack, do you have, Jack Burton, do you have mod powers in my room? Uh, I have, uh, yeah, mod power, or I've got uh, room operator powers in this room. I can't give out mod powers, though. Uh, can you give out room operator stuff? Not that I know of. I think that's all. It's got to be actual server mod and admin stuff, or gotcha. admin level that does that. Okay, the Casimir effect, where between metal plates and empty space are modified by the presence of virtual particles. So yeah, that would be empirical data right there. Yep. Hey, so like, uh, who thinks uh, like me, Russia's not gonna get all its objectives done? Is that a joke? Like Russia isn't gonna get any of its objectives done. This is gonna, it's gonna take you. Uh, it's already gotten a few objectives done. I mean, it took like the largest. Uh, EU, well, not EU, but largest European uh, nuclear station. Um, I don't really think that was one of their objectives. Like, their objectives are more like security and economics. Like, literally, if their objective was take put a foot in Ukraine, yeah, they done that. But since the goal was more economic and national security reasons, those are the things they're not going to accomplish, like any of their actual goals. I don't think they'll win. I think they'll, you know, use the peace talks. But uh, I'm kind of surprised, man. I didn't realize they uh, would have so much trouble. Yes, I mean I Ukraine am... is like one third their population, but like yes, I'm they also didn't surprised by troops. the the military f ability of Ukraine to actually wage a successful um, oh, I'm not protection. Like it's kind that. of like how America attacked Iraq and America won in like three days. It was over, um, and then. That's kind of what you would expect to happen to Ukraine, but nope, Ukraine is actually putting up a, a sizable fight. Super well, surprising. I would uh, like uh, Russia to lose just because I'm a patriot, but um, when you get like thousands upon thousands of like anti-tank missiles from other sides and like every Western country trying to use like special forces and drone strikes to uh, stop your military secretly, um... You know, it's fair to say it's going to be a tough time. Well, even with that, like, I'm surprised at how much, how much damage Ukraine has done to the Russian army, like knocking down all those planes, destroying all those tanks. Like, that's really impressive. 
I'm happy. I mean, I know we help them, and a lot of other Western nations help them, but it's good for us. But, uh, you know, I don't think uh, it's particularly fair, and I think China's like, mm, what? this ain't fair. <laughs> uh, and Russia's like, mm, those are, those now are, we know who our real allies are. Those, those are thoughts China has literally never had. China has never, never even heard of the word fair. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Anybody want to jump in? You know, Russia bad? Huh? Russia I just don't want to see nukes bad. involved. That's it. Yeah, you don't want to Russia see is making big mistakes. I don't think we should die for Ukraine. I'm not going to lie. Uh, no, that's fair. That's fair. We don't even have to. You send like a couple thousand uh, anti-tank missiles and you do like hundreds of millions of dollars of damage, even if Ukraine loses. Yeah, you know, so if we go to war with to... Mexico, if we go to war with Mexico and Russia sends Mexico a thousand tanks, are we just supposed to like let that happen? Uh, well, they wouldn't send a thousand tanks because it would be prohibitively expensive, but they might send like small arms and anti-tank missiles. So if those like same we weapons are going to be used to kill us, are we just supposed to sit on our Probably. asses and let that happen? Why would we invade Mexico again? Uh, it's just it's hypothetical. A hypothetical. So, so to me, I, I understand oh, yeah. his point, and his point is that. Suppose Russia invaded one of the NATO countries that's a neighbor to Ukraine, then we would be obligated to actually go in and defend them because we're a part of NATO and we're obligated to fight. And if we did, that would essentially start World War III for sure. America versus Russia, that would be World War III. And then the probability of using <clears throat> nukes significantly increases, which could potentially kill lots and lots of people. And his statement is that On the positive should side, we? it might do. The number one rule of nukes is to never use them. Yes, yeah, okay. But, Tell the United States that, but, but go ahead. That, the thing is, is that because Russia is expansionist, and since they are expanded into Ukraine, and if they did attack a NATO country, if if we went to war, the the country who's most likely to lose is the one who's most likely to start a nuclear war. So... That's a good point. If Russia was going to lose, and they were going to lose their national sovereignty and their ability to defend themselves, then the likelihood they might use a nuke and that other countries would retaliate with nukes is actually pretty high. Especially yeah. considering the statements that Putin has made about, like, I don't remember what it was, but he said basically he would see the entire world be destroyed if it meant Russia was to be destroyed. Yep. I don't doubt that I'm one bit. Sure I think the United the States didn't say that, but they feel the exact same way. I don't know about that. I know America's that. government's for its fault is like rational. Putin's not. I don't, I think, I don't think. I America don't think. This is this so, is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Putin to be is fair, not an idiot. He's uh, for the past eight years has been planning an invasion of Ukraine, but the American media is painting him as some irrational idiot who's making a, a lot of mistakes right now, and that might be part of his plan because. Making Putin look like uh, an idiot who's about to start World War Three might be the biggest bluff that the U.S. media and the U.S. government is calling right now. If they can't back that up, and eventually in two months it looks like no nuclear holocaust is actually going to happen, then the U.S. government and the U.S. media is going to look like a bunch of fucking idiots. Well, that's not a problem because they do that all the time on their own. But does anyone want to fact check a thing? Because. Uh... Does anyone want to see if uh, Russian parliament passed a bill to take all of the protesters that they've been detaining and conscripting them? That so makes that literally that no stupid, sense. Dude. That would, that would, would be dumb. That? Well, I'm it's asking like, if anyone wants to like fact check that. They'd be like, you know what, let's, let's take all of the war prisoners and let's make them soldiers on our side and see what happens. Yeah, let's uh, give them uh, like classified dude, they won't be uh, so, like, what are you about? intelligence and help them understand how a military works. That'd let's give guns idea. to the people who hate Obviously, what we're doing. Genius. Do Ooh, Genius. I did hear about this. They though. probably would just kill them. Okay, no, well, Ukraine is more realistic. Ukraine has a law like where like if you're a Ukrainian citizen, you can get a free firearm. Like that's kind of hilarious. Well, that makes perfect sense. Like, um, what's it? Um, Israel and Switzerland do that too, where they have. Mandatory military service and you get a gun, so and you get to take it home. So no, no, no it's not mandatory military service. Well, if duh, because they don't have time no for that nobody, now. You can get a gun right now. Well, again, that makes for sense free. exactly yeah, like for I mean, what I said. Because if you're in, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, like, hold up, 
Hold on. So in countries that are at risk of being invaded, like those countries have mandatory military service and give out weapons exactly for that reason. So now that a war has started, the fact that they give out weapons makes a lot of sense. No, I don't disagree with that statement. I'm just saying that's exactly how, like civilian buildings get bombarded. I don't Did see the, the connection there. You don't see how like giving a civilian a gun and they take pot shots at the Russian military gets a residential building shot by a tank. Uh, he has got a good point, uh, Chad. Though no, because I think that we're gonna do, they do that anyway. Like they shoot the residential buildings before. Uh, I don't think that's fair to say, man. I think. Uh, from yeah, like the level, they're like, "Oh my God, Russia attacked Russian." I mean, a, a, an apartment building, and like six people were wounded. I'll Bro, say, there's like, literally a video of Russia running over a little lady in a car. Yeah, no, I seriously though, I think Russia, real talk, like, yeah, I want them to get their ass kicked, but I'm, I feel it's like pretty Western media e to be like, "Oh my God, they're committed war crimes," and. I don't well, I think they're trying, man, but like you have a bunch of Ukrainians. Well, well so just to be clear, war crimes happen defense. in war all the time. Everybody yeah, has war crimes. Exactly. War, like saying war crimes are, are happening is like, yeah, war is a thing that definitely happens. So the news media saying that is just irrelevant. Like they, the news media are a bunch of idiots who want clicks and do nothing of any importance. So, yes, war crimes are a thing. They've always been a thing. America does more than literally everyone else. But, yes, war crimes are a thing. I just, I, I meant to point out, excuse me, T-Jump. Unfortunately, our media is, like, very incredibly biased. Unfortunate. But it helps you, like... Excuse you know, me, T-Jump. What? Bias. Yeah. Please respond in guest text. Thank I'm you. not looking at the chat. I'm playing the video game. What do you want? Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the admin oh, needs you to... What are you playing? You playing? Did the you admin needs you to respond. Did you want him to become a mod? Uh, yeah, so like uh, God420 and Beowulf, B3O Wolf are. Also, don't forget me. I have to be. Uh, I just want to know what you're playing right now. Like, and objects are, are real, right too. No, uh, yeah. no, I don't know. I don't know objects are real. I don't know him that okay, well. Okay, so just God and then Beowulf. Yep. And Nathan R23. I no. don't know. I don't know who that is either. Just B30 and me. Yeah. Got <laughs> Don't let them Look trick the you. Monkeys. Give me a minute. Uh, and Nathan, oh, me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Take your time. It doesn't need to be in a hurry. So, are you? Are you, getting, are you uh, what's your name? Who's the cool guy talking with the with the points? I want to know what game you're playing. Come on, tell me. Oh, I'm playing uh, Immortal Jason Phoenix. Immortal, Immortal Phoenix. Phoenix. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I'd, I've sub submit to GameFly, and so I just put like a whole bunch of games on the list and try them whenever I want. I get you. Yeah. I don't game like spending money. Still so thing, bro. Get whatever game I want. Next game I'm gonna get is uh, Elden Rings or whatever. The one that George R. Martin has uh, specifically or allegedly, you know, put his yeah. uh, creative input on. Open World Can't Dark Souls. What? Open World Dark Souls. That's that's the official name. Oh, exciting. But anywho, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think like, uh, you know, it's not great to see how biased our media is, but it is great to see like Russia get a really large black eye. But I might be afraid that they're kind of like, uh, what's it called? They're, uh, they're putting in like their B or C team and they just want to look dumb for like long term <laughs> purposes. That's Wait, what? what I'm afraid of. How does, I don't, I don't understand what possible long term. All right. Well, oh. here's, here's where this what? is coming from. So Russia has 1 million active troops, allegedly, 2 million reserves, right? Yep. So their invading force is only 150,000. Does yep. that make sense? Yes. Yikes. Yes, that makes perfect it sense. Work. Like, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Think, think about, think about the, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. It's about other things as well. well not just so every single war ever started, the that recent war, not like in the past, recent war, the sure. invading force is usually a very small percentage of your actual active military. Like America invading Iraq, the active military and the invading force were very different numbers. Like it's always the case that you want to use the least forces required in order to potentially achieve the goal recently yes yes and so and but russia, russia was time, not when you russia was not lose, expecting this they were not expecting this well and, okay but we're a week in now so uh why are their numbers still the same uh because it would cost them a lot more money and resources to do a full-scale invasion and doing that would be very very bad 
you talking about? They haven't even committed all the troops. They're like blockaded. No, not we're aware blockaded. of that. They're That's the point we're making. They're on the road. Yeah. So, they have so, three yeah. million possible troops, not to mention conscripts, and they're sending in like five percent of that number. Yes, that's normal. Probably why would they send in more? Answer. That's normal. They're already what? having logistical. Why would they send in more when they're already having logistical issues with the already? Well, maybe like, they hire a troops. few people to solve those logistical issues. I mean, you are the third uh, largest oil people. producer in the world. Did you say hire people? So, so maybe so, you hire a few more logistical people. Logistical yeah, issues like, is like a few more, uh, hold up, uh, hold up, hold up. So so logistical yeah, issues is like transporting food and energy, uh, gasoline, ammunition. Yeah. You don't hire people to transport your... Let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Not hire, obviously. Send more military men. That's what I'm going to say. Well, that's the problem. If they send more military men, they need to send more food, more gasoline, more trucks, which costs exponentially more money the more you spend. That's like... Playing, have, um, so, so it's like if you're have, playing hold, up, hold, up, hold, up, hold up stop it. stop stop so it's like if you're playing poker so and you lose a hand and the, the the correct strategy is not to double down and that's essentially what you're suggesting is that when when you lose on a certain amount of resources the correct way to do it is to dump more resources at it and that's usually not the best way so doubling okay, down okay i like your logic i like your logic that's some good that's a good that's a good, uh, that's a good little uh that's a good little uh Touche there. I forget the word I'm looking for. Not rebuke. Like, retort. Uh, retort. That's exactly. Oh my yeah, God, you're retort. in my mind right now. Good job. Retort. That is a great retort. I don't know, man. Hmm. Putin is special forces, but. Uh... Well, so what I think happened was that Putin was expecting the Ukrainian invasion to go like the Americans did to the Iraqi invasion. <laughs> yeah. Instant yeah. win. Yeah. They have nothing. You're technologically superior in every way. But that didn't happen. So now he's very surprised and he's probably trying to figure out uh, what the best course of action is. He's thinking, well, Actually, probably okay. he's, he's thinking probably they have a limited amount of resources and so they can only put up a defensive front for a minimal amount of time and then they're going to crack. So he's probably that's probably the strategy he's going for is that he continues with the current plan and eventually they're going to run out of support and just crack. And they haven't yet. And that's probably very surprising and concerning for him. And so he's probably going to be considering. Yeah, he definitely should have gone with that blitzkrieg, you know, before the Western yeah. I really think you guys think like, like I don't know if we know the whole situation. Like, oh, oh Russia is somehow getting bogged down. Like, maybe like that's the actual plan here. I don't know. Yeah, you guys aren't military analysts. Like, yeah, you're not well, fucking guess... Pentagon. You guys aren't the Pentagon. Like, chill. Yeah, you don't know the yeah, whole yeah, situation. So, no, we'll talk. Hey, let's speculate. So absolutely guy, none of that is no, relevant. No, no. So, so Discord there's there's no technology. One sec. So there's no tactical advantage to, um losing thousands of tanks and pretending you're shit at invasion like there, there's literally no benefit to that M military uh, invasions know, are not uh, super cia 40 chess things like there, there is no benefit here here's here's my logic here's my logic and number one whoever said we shouldn't uh, speculate uh, when you speculate you learn other people's opinions new ideas and number two obviously we know like five percent of the total information okay we don't know that much we are not the Pentagon. We don't know shit. The Pentagon doesn't but know shit either, know. just to be clear. The Pentagon oh, also yes, does do. not sh know shit. No, they don't. Yes, they, uh, they, they literally don't. told China yeah, Russia was yeah. going to invade Ukraine, and China gave their information to Russia. Yes. The Pentagon knew this was going to happen for everyone a Everyone already knew that was going yeah. to happen. Like, so that I'll was say, super I'll obvious. I'll say, like, in real talk, like, U.S. military probably has, like, at least 80% information, and that's a conservative estimate. Not even, yeah, no, UAV. no. Yeah, Google so, on so your side. War, first yeah. thing about war is that nobody has enough information. Like having information is the most valuable thing because you barely have any of it. So no, no one in war has eighty percent of the information. That would be a dream if you had that much information. Um, but you, you can be assured that losing a bunch of battles is is in no way beneficial. Like the reason Putin okay. didn't do no, a blitzkrieg because if, if they had done a blitzkrieg. Everybody would have been pissed. Like everybody in the surrounding nations would have been even more on alert, and it would have been more likely to garner a worldwide response. So the more military he sends, the more likely he is to get retaliated against. So he wants to use the smallest military possible in order to um, act as as least threatening as possible to get his goal accomplished. And it's not working, and that's the concerning fact for him. After all, it's a peace I, I, mission, right? That's peace a mission. Okay, point. But um, in reality, uh, no, not in reality. I just think uh, looking weak, yes, I'll admit, like, uh, 
in many ways does not go well for you. But in other ways, if you use your least trustworthy soldiers, right, you get rid of like your most incompetent, you gauge how much your worst military so presence can Come do. On. If you're, well, listen, okay, first of all, like if as an economics major, like my number one goal right now would be like if I'm a, uh, well, well, let's if let's I'm let's say they do that. So uh, let's take your example. Let's say that they want to just um, expel their least useful soldiers or something. Like, what is the economic impact of doing that? First thing, every okay, one of no, their family yeah. and friends are going to be pissed at you. Um, you're going to lose public support. The longer anybody's in war, the more public support they lose for them, and the less likely they are going to be able to maintain it. Um, they're going to lose economic usefulness. They're going to increase sanctions, which are going to add costs to their economy. Um, they're going to have logistical issues, technological losses. Uh, so all of, do you really think just simply eliminating some bad soldiers is a positive uh, gain that is worth all of the different economic costs that they're getting right now? Is that is that a good idea? Yeah. Let me, let me respond to that. That is some excellent points. Exactly the points I've thought of, except for one or two I missed. But uh, here's my response. So number one, it's not just uh, bad soldiers, it's old equipment. So tanks that are old, blah, blah, blah. And then you, okay, so here's the long-term benefit. You're going into World War III, okay? Ukraine doesn't fucking matter. You have big entrenched, entrenched interests that you want to see fall. Germany, uh, UK, America, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you want those people to fall, right? And you want to look weak and you want china india you know the people who have been practicing their war games together you want to see uh you know the playing field so to speak you want to see who's on your side who's not so yes you expend a very large economic loss a very large you know face loss but russia has always been the bad guy like russia this is nothing new they've always had sanctions they've always been hated they've always been like you know people don't like them um, so generally, you take this hit on the chin, a very large punch to the chin, and then long term, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, you make the big move. You go World War III, use all the technology you've been keeping back. Uh, China, you know, we don't know how they're going to act. We don't know uh, what type of weapons they've uh, developed. It's a bluff. Wait, wh why, why, what is I'm the... I'm not saying it's a bluff. Plus, not, let me... Wait, 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 wait. I'm not understanding what you're saying. One sec, one sec. I don't... Wait, 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 wait. I'm not following your argument yep. here. So you're saying that it, instead of just launching into World War III with all of your good tech, first, you're going to waste billions of dollars attacking Ukraine, which does nothing, and sacrifice a lot of troops and tanks for no reason, make yourself weaker, have everyone unite against you, uh, lose billions of dollars economically, and then decide 20 years from then to start World War III when you are significantly weaker? Why? Uh, again, you wouldn't be significantly weaker if you wasted your what would be considered um, not uh, what's the word uh, shoot. Uh, well, weaker here. What I mean by the, is economically uh, weaker. Uh, not useful thing. Uh, fuck. What's the word? Um, like yeah, old, no longer. Right. right. Uh, but but that doesn't. So even if you give up your old useful stuff, you're pitting the world against you. They're uniting. Which it already and, is. It already is. Not as much. Ahead. Not as much. Not nearly as much. And you're going to have a lot of sanctions. So, so costs in Russia are going to skyrocket. Their economic production is going to go down. They're not going to have as many opportunities or resources. So they're going to be throttled economically. So they're not going to be able to produce as much military stuff. Okay. Let's do the flip of your scenario, right? Russia wins in two days, right? Sure. It just steamrolls everybody. It fucking kicks ass and takes names, right? Oh. What does the United States, UK, and Germany do after that? Yes, that would what be do bad. You think do? That would be bad. You wouldn't want to do that. No, no, no. I'm just saying, you know, work with me here. What happens after that? Uh, massive sanctions. There'd be military support for all of the surrounding nations. Um, they would all join and increase the military production of NATO in order to increase the, the military power of all the local okay. countries I'm nearby. Yeah, then China takes Taiwan. Then China takes am, Taiwan, uh, and then what does the world do? Well, the, right there. So well China, China like, taking Taiwan America, wouldn't affect anything, because the American military isn't going to go there. They're just going to give a lot of military equipment to the, all the local surrounding countries. And so their military is going to be unified, and they're going to group together, because over the past... 
50 or so years, British, all of the British countries government. in the Europe have not been working well together. That's what that was Trump's criticism. No one's paying their due in NATO. And now because of the threat of Russia, people are going to take NATO a lot more seriously and group together and start reinforcing their militaries a lot more than they would. So they've been given essentially uh, a warning. You know, they would have if, if China if goes Russia into was Taiwan, winning, the Br- the but British not will winning. attack China. Well, well, so, so they're, I, they're doing that right now. They're literally doing that and benefiting NATO right now, I even don't though know. They, they would have done that regardless with any invasion. But we're talking about like people who see well, it. Right, right. That's that's the point. Any if invasion. Out, hold up. Hold up. So any any invasion Russia yeah, is going to do is going to stimulate everyone else to start building up their military. So any preemptive action um, gives people warning to build up their militaries and gives them more time to prevent anything power you have to actually win World War III. So any preemptive I, action by Russia, if they planned on starting World War III, is a terrible idea. If, if you really wanted I, to yeah, win World War III, in, it, would, it would be full, just go logic, for the win. I, I, I disagree with you fundamentally on your, um, How? your levels. So here you go. Let me, my point. So Russia invades poorly, but they increase their spending by $10 billion. Russia wins, they increase their spending by two hundred billion. Do you see my point? No. No, but they're uh invading. So if they steamroll, you increase your budget two hundred billion and you go full notch. No, you but they're having almost that much invade, in sanctions put on them. So then you invade, they counter. Yeah. No, but here's what you do. Like long term strategy, they only invest like maybe ten billion and they're like, eh, they suck anyway. We're not we're yeah, we're no one thinks that. We're Literally no know. one thinks that. That but is the dumbest thing. Deal. Like so so You're saying that oh, hold, hold up, hold up. So saying that oh they lost, so they're not a concern even more anymore, uh, even though they're the leading military like nuclear no, power on the planet. Hold up, hold up, stop, stop. So get, let him finish. Stop, stop talking or I'm going to mute working, you. And it wasn't please, working, please so that's why I kept muted. Please so, stop talking. So if like your plan here doesn't seem to work, because if your plan is is oh, we're going to attack another nation, but lose and look weak, so everyone else just stops investing in the military. That's the exact opposite that's going to happen no, ever. Yeah, but see, you're you're mis you're misinterpreting me here. Obviously, what, what is the benefit? What, what could they? So, so, Obviously, they're going to invest. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So, so here's what yeah, I'm missing. Here's what I'm missing. You have given no benefit to Russia at all for taking this strategy. Everything you've listed is things that they're going to lose or cost or bad plans. No matter what, there's no benefit you've added. All you've said is okay. Uh, again, so the benefit. I'm just gonna clearly stated the benefit is winning world war three that's no, no, the benefit no, th- that there's no way for them to do that everything they do makes it less likely they're going to win there's no benefit that makes it more likely they're going to win by using a weak force to attack ukraine that is the opposite of trying to win world war three if you're trying to win world war three the best thing to do is to attack before anybody has any time to react so in a war preemptive strikes are usually the best way to try and win it and so if you're going to give people a lot of warning by attacking Attacking another nation, which causes everyone else to start building up their military. That's the opposite of doing anything that could potentially win World War Three. And having them okay. imply sanctions you're, on your country that will then destroy you. Well, hold up, hold up. Anyway. So having yeah. having them imply sanctions on your country so you have less economic power and less ability to grow your military is also the opposite of what you want if you're trying to win World War Three. Germany had the, the better strategy in trying to win the World War, which is build up a huge military, invade as fast as possible with the least warnings possible. That's how you want right. to win a war. Yep, yep. Okay, so Blitzkrieg. Russia yeah. already has but, a but huge military. About, about Excuse me. Country. Russia's not at war, though. That's not their premise, right? Hopefully. Well, he, he's arguing, his, his argument is, is right. that the reason Russia is doing like a weak invasion and deliberately losing is because their plan is to win World War III. That, that's his argument. That's basically yeah, that's, my argument. Follow. Yeah, and all they've done is occurred shit tons of sanctions against themselves, which again, reduces again, their money you in. You guys are pretending like Russia hasn't been sanctioned for the past 25 years, okay? No, and no, they're no, losing no, no, their no, 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 That's not, that's not, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. My argument here isn't that years. they aren't being sanctioned against. My argument here is that if they wanted to win World War III, the correct strategy is not to incur more sanctions and to use a weak attack to seem weak. Those would be counterproductive to trying to win World War III. The, that's where we disagree. See, like, our only, well, where I disagree is you're thinking they should win really, really fast. But think about it like this. Think about it if their goal is not to win World War III right now. Like, think about oh, it if they stupid. thought the United States was, I think the United States is, like, still very, very strong. But I think in 20 years, 
we will be very, very weak. You know, we have the aristocracy bleeding us dry and getting okay. Let's more let's more grant that. Bad. Let's grant that for us for a well, moment. Let me finish. Let me finish. Well, wait, 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 wait. I, want, I don't want to. I don't want to forget about this. So, okay. so let's say you're right, and that America's going to be super weak in 20 years. Would it be better to attack America then? with or without all of the sanctions, with or without a full military force, with or without all of the other countries in NATO uniting and building a military, it seems like if in 20 years America is going to suck, the better thing to do is just to not invade any country and wait until that happens and then attack, not attack now and give everybody a whole bunch of warning. Um, you see, that's the thing, though. Like, if you do it that way, they're going to know you're building up forces regardless, right? So regardless... No, no, no. no. Oh, yep. Like yes, you have you have surveillance footage, man. You can't hide that. Invasion. That part that part's fine. But if you literally invade Ukraine and make all of the countries around Ukraine and the UK and NATO now afraid of you and taking a lot of time to be like, oh, we have to consider Russia now, and so they're going to build up a military. That would not have happened if they didn't invade. You want to look as peaceful as possible. Look as like you're not going to invade. I hear what you're saying, but we disagree because. Now they actually, okay, so Russia used to be like, even now, think about this room, oh right? God. Even before Russia invaded, even oh, before man. like it did invade, even the week after invaded, everybody was like, Russia, oh my God, they're going to stream roll. Oh my God, they're going to kick it out. Oh my God, Russia's going to win. It's going to be so fast. Now everybody's like, wait a minute, they'll win, but they're kind of weak. I didn't realize they were so weak. Like, do you see how the narrative you're has changed? That doesn't this is, people's you're people's this opinion. Is a people's Russia op was a big hold hold up. People's Russia opinion that Russia is weak does nothing to affect the surrounding countries. They're not like, oh, Russia's weak. We don't have to worry about it. They're like, holy shit, the world's leading nuclear power is attacking another country. We need to be prepared if they decide to attack us because holy shit, they're a nuclear power. So no one is thinking, oh, they're weak. We don't have to worry about uh, them. Literally, see, not a okay. thing anyone is thinking. No one in the world I is thinking that. I think that yeah, I, no I, I think is and you guys are all wrong. Nuclear power, like right, and we have a lot of like nuclear powers. Even Pakistan is a nuclear power now. Yeah, are we Pakistan, worried about Pakistan? If Pakistan, if Pakistan, a yes, we are worried about Pakistan. The Pakistan yes, I mean, let me rephrase. The Pakistan-India conflict is a is a massive part of uh, international relations, and gee, true, I sure true. hope our Pentagon is planning around that. <laughs> Second of all, if Pakistan was invading European nations as wow. in order to recapitulate a Pakistan empire, right? Yep. Then yes, we would we would be concerned. The question is about ambition, right? I would like to ask. We a know we know that when you're done. we know that Russia, for instance, had invaded Georgia previous to this, annexed yep. Crimea previous to this, had invaded yep. the Ukraine before prior to this. It is very clear that, that Russia has like uh, has imperialistic ambitions. It wants to recapture former, like what are now satellite states uh -huh. and what previously had been part of the USSR. So it's clear from an international relations perspective that there are going to be other nations at risk. And so long as those other nations want to preserve their sovereignty, they're going to take steps to protect okay. that sovereignty. And before, because there was a big, there was a, maybe not a consensus around the world, but there was this idea that there's no way Russia's going to invade Ukraine, right? They'd be crazy, eh. right? Now, people, I, what I, all I'm saying is, from a Bayesian perspective, people have increased their belief that they are at risk from invasion, right? Okay, okay. Now, Because I, Russia has demonstrated the that they're willing uh, to do it. Number one, uh, so question of the room, uh, just quick yes or no, please don't uh, elaborate. Do you believe that uh, in a military win, if you want to occupy a nation, the number one most... Uh, Really, the only strategy is boots on the ground. No matter how much tech, drones, whatever, no. missiles, no. the way you win a war is boots on the no. ground. Yes, yeah. or no. 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 no, 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 shock and surprise no. be your best yes. bet. To start. Well, no, so, so, so shock so, and hold surprise, up. you want complete air superiority, and when yeah. you want to use well, no, 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 no. Like, drones, there's as easier way, especially. There's an easier way. There's an okay. easier way. All you have to do is destroy the infrastructure of the other place and they'll yes. lose. So you don't even need you don't need no one in the area. You don't need any technology in the area at all. If you destroy their infrastructure, their source of food, and they start to starve to death, you've won Hospitals, the war. Airports. Okay, so then you turn uh, the entire world against you. Is that is that your Russia's doing that? Like, Russia is 
literally yes. doing that, right? All right, it's already it's already been. Uh, that's like nothing new for Russia. Russia, and that is, Russia. No, no, hold Russia. on. So this this is a point you're you've made a couple times. This is a point you've made a couple times, and I think it's just flat out wrong. Okay, so fair. It's it's true that Russia has been sanctioned in the past. It was sanctioned over Crimea, you know, as recently as 2014. And the invasion of Georgia in 2009 ish. Go ahead. Um. So, uh, there. In order for your theory to be true, you'd have to think that these sanctions, because you're sanctioning someone who's already had really significant sanctions, the marginal effect of these sanctions should be fairly low, right? But we uh, know not low, that the, no. But well, then it, if the, the question is whether these sanctions are having an impact, and your response to like T Jump's claim that in fact these sanctions are having an impact, imposing a, a large significant cost on Russia, your response has been, oh well, they they're already sanctioned. But that does it doesn't matter if they're already sanctioned. What matters is what is the damage of the current sanctions? Are the current sanctions imposing a large cost or a small cost? When you right, when you right. when Here's you my, give this argument that they're the already cost. sanctioned, it sounds like so, what yes. you're saying is the current no. sanctions aren't having much of an effect. And no, they are. I disagree. We know they are. Fundamentally, you guys so the currency, the recent sanctions just watching their currency, now. it's People gone down like at least forty percent. Difficult, but, uh, difficult to hear what you said. There was some crosstalk there. I didn't mean I to probably buy some this. nice stuff there with, I'll with my money. I don't think anyone was being malicious. <sighs> I'm just, just saying I, I, I don't think anybody was being malicious. Yeah, I, just, I, just, I didn't mean to. So. I just wanted to interject talk. around these current sanctions in regards yep. to, does anybody notice that they're designed in a way that it removes everybody's intimate, you know, privacy around purchasing the properties, for instance? Oh, you mean like the United States is uh, it... saying that, oh my God, Russia is using cryptocurrency, so we should crack down on cryptocurrency? Even Wait, though, I have, like, I have no idea. Wait, hold up. No I didn't understand that. What, what do you mean they are cracking down on people's... They're saying that because oh, so, Russia... You... No, 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 mine, 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 mine. I was talking to Echo. One sec, one sec. I was asking I was yeah. asking Echo what he meant. I didn't understand what Echo oh. meant. So, so in the UK, I don't know what's in America, but the recent round of sanctions is that the Russian oligarchs and the, you know, the powers to be cannot buy property in the UK under like a shadow companies, etc. Uh, what is that? You have, okay. you have to know. You have to know the name of the owner instead of just their. Well, company. I can go further and elaborate on this point. A so Russian they're, they're billionaire. That's all I know. That's all I know. They're, what is they're all piercing, know. They're oh, piercing the veil. They're piercing the veil of corporate anonymity, specifically in the UK, <laughs> specifically for making certain kinds of uh, real estate. Yeah, yes, and Echo, that, what was your that point? Impacts everybody, not just Russians. Yeah, so oh, what, what's your I point? Can't... Yeah, true. Echo, yeah, what's your okay. point? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm just saying, Echo. So the West is becoming used, and the West increasing. Are, hold, let, let, Echo, let, let, let Echo finish. Let Echo finish. Go ahead, Echo. I can't talk, can I? I can talk. Go ahead, Echo. What, what was your saying? Just the West are using the situation in Russia to remove more of our freedoms, our rights. Sort of. So like yes. they're they're making implementation because they and don't want hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So yeah. so yes, Russian oligarchs who are very intimately tied with the uh, government as a whole, um, if they end up buying or getting power in the UK, then that can be essentially used directly by the Russian government. Therefore, they need to under to know any kind of personal connection the oligarchs have to these organizations that are owned in the UK. And yes, they're obviously going to implement that as a law for everybody because it would kind of be racist if they said only Russians or whatever. So yes, they're using that for everyone. Um, but I don't see why that's necessarily unexpected. Like in war, this happens all the time. This is a pretty standard thing. So we're not using this yeah. as like uh, some it's kind of ma malicious means. And just question. a further point. Tell it's, me it's a no, civil it's liberties okay. question, but, right? The, 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 right? The worry is that like you're, you're never going to let a good emergency go to waste where you, there's going to be, you know, actors in your government who are going to want to, um, like, expand their, take any opportunity to expand their power. Yeah. And so you could think that these encroachments, while they make sense during wartime, are going to be hard to push back after the war. I think it's just, yeah. it's just encouraging a sense of caution yeah. around these, these sorts yeah. of things. I agree. 9-11. Uh, fundamentally, oh, that story. But, uh, yeah, I I'm think, kind of uh, moving now. In the UK, really didn't re need very much excuse, but they are using the excuse even well, more. I want to bring up sin, but I think it's too true. No, it's my turn. It's so long. Let me finish. Hey, All right. So, you. like mm -hmm. after twenty years of sanctions, um, you're gonna prepare your War's economy depressing. to be uh, to be able to okay, withstand. Okay, production. What? Hey, one at a time.
Can I finish? Let me finish. So yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my um, gosh. Yes. Okay. So I, okay. Let me be very clear here. Yes, the sanctions are powerful. Yes, the sanctions affect them. I'm not saying well. that they're not affecting them, and I'm not saying they're affecting them in a big way. I agree with both those points, but my, I'm getting at is if your economy is prepared for like 20 years of sanctions. So, Jump, earlier you did say something things, about sin. That like I to ask. they start purchasing foreign and, currency reserves uh, in China. Yeah, could you give like, me a definition and, for sin? Hold on, I someone else is talking, stuff. buddy. All right, yeah, someone let me finish. So, yeah, what Russia has been doing has been That's moving funny. its assets from foreign currencies into Chinese yuan, as well as other like non-NATO-based they've, they've cultivated currency. strategic finish, relationships. Let me finish. If you have 20 years of sanctions, you are going to learn to divest yourself from places where those sanctions can hurt you. Now, yes, they hurt them really bad right now, but think long term. If you are building an economy that's basically not sanction proof, but can deal with sanctions in a much better way, 10 to 15 years from now, if you really want to go in a big way, then those sanctions will be too little too late and they'll be weak. That's there's no, there's no need. There's no need to trigger the sanctions to do that. Triggering the yes, sanctions. Triggering, yeah, yourself, triggering a sanctions. One second. Yeah, one yeah, one yeah, second. Yeah, I, yeah. I just love to get this point out if you don't mind. Um, All right. So uh, let's just take an example, uh, like the SWIFT payment system that Russia got uh, expelled from. Right. There's this idea floating around that they're going to um, have like a Russo Sino India. Um, currency exchange to make uh, energy purchases easier between these com between these countries uh, in the absence of SWIFT, and that might act might completely be true. But they could have done that before, right? If if the idea is that Russia wants to make themselves sanction proof, there's no need to do that with the sanctions imposed, with all of the cultural costs of Russia being expelled from like soft institutions like the Olympics and that sort of a thing, with all of the hard costs of like you're tanking the ruble, your your banks are cut off from the World Bank, so you can't make purchases. Like if you no know one's you're buying your resources. Office, yeah. I mean there's it's it's completely it's completely pointless to use this as a strategy to do that. Russia hasn't uh, made themselves sanction proof enough to prevent this kind of economic collapse, which is imminent. You have oh, to there's, another, to oh, there's another thing already. comes with think? these sanctions, yeah, is if they suspect you may be building up for war, they can actually sanction sending you supplies that could be used for that purpose. Yeah, okay, I agree. So you, uh, can, no, actually get, you can actually be punished that way. And they are right, not yep. completely you, free country. country. They do re require trade with other countries. For stuff they require every day, such as technology. You want to know who the largest, one of the largest the importers Russia of uh, Russia is? The Ukraine. Ukraine. So, so it's kind of destroying your trade partner is is really stupid. Yeah, because um, you lose all your technology too. Think think about it this way: if you're going to take that big of a hit to the ruble, why not instead of burning those through a sanction and losing access to a bunch of financial institutions, just take that loss in rubles and use it in an arms deal with the U.S. or an arms oh. deal with other neutral nations who aren't willing to align themselves against you pre-sanction, but have now aligned themselves against you post-sanction. Yeah, Spend you could, those you could literally to yeah, modern, you guys to help are, modernize guys are, your military. You could inflate you the guys, currency. Uh, like you could literally just start wanna... buying anything you wanted and just print currency infinitely if you're going to expect a deflation of the currency. So you could just exactly. buy anything you wanted at no cost to you. I was going to say, like, and it's then uh, currency, uh, massively increase your inflation. I don't think that's. I mean, in in uh, logic, that would work, but not in reality. People would be aware that you're printing out shitloads of money, well, no, especially no, that's, oligarchs. So, so just to clarify, so my point here is that if you're well, if you're correct. expecting to lose, uh, demonetize, or, or lose the value of your currency, the better way to do that is to, if you expect it, you can artificially inflate it first because you're already going to expect it to lose value. I would disagree with that statement. Everybody, um, you don't need to already did that. that. Everybody's going to see that coming a mile. Economy collapses. If you're aware that your currency is going to be devalued, you purchase foreign currency reserves in preparation, not like yes, speed that along. Yeah, but, like, um, but like, so you purchase as many of them as possible by printing as much money as you can and buying it in segments wow. until it deflates. Yes, but yeah. world governments are going to be aware of that. Russia They're probably already know. did that. We wasn't yeah. aware of it.
I already man. knew about I'm the, doing that the red petro log. The, wait, uh, the, this is this analysis is what, what I'm trying no, to, what Russia, is Russia and other Russia countries already had massive reserves of foreign currency, especially the American Not dollar, massive. because because yes, massive because the massive. United because of the petrodollar because of the fact that oil is priced and sold in American dollars. Yeah, we got. It. It's been like that yeah. for like forty years. So I'm just getting at the the long term here. Um, you are. Um, you're okay so you're saying let's all do it when we're nice and powerful if you are nice and powerful and you appear nice and powerful and no one in 20 years has been um what's the word no one in 20 years has uh like thought anything other than oh my god they're building up their insanely large military think about it in a broad term like you have dozens of actors you have dozens of militaries dozens of countries so China sits back. They're like, Russia, all right, we'll take the big hit, but you're going to pay us back. You know, we have a lot of Chinese you, you want. You we're going to take it to China. China. We're going to look weak uh, because China is like the number one ally of Russia. You wouldn't do this to, you wouldn't hold, hand off bad assets to China because you're going to alienate them. No, well, no, if you're, no, no, exactly. if you're going, if your plan is I'm going to win World War Three with my buddies, uh, China and my, my like puppet states around India, me. Yeah, 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 good. If, if that's your strategy, the question is, okay, from the, so like take, take the time from like 10 years ago until the start of World War Three. What you're saying is there's this period before World War Three where everyone's going to know that like you're, you're in a, you're in a wartime standing, active wartime standing because of the invasion yeah. to Ukraine, but it's okay for people to know that some amount of time before uh, before you actually trigger World War Three. That's uh -huh. okay because you're going to be presenting a false face. They're going to have like wrong expectations, so you'll have like a really effective uh, yes. first salvo. That's like you're your very that's close. like your that's your position. That but, is my so position. You're, you've but, already uh, conceded. Bit, you've already conceded that. It, it, with that position, that it's okay for Russia to have some kind of period where people know that they're on an active military footing. No, what see, I'm that's, suggesting, that's what people wouldn't agree. people wouldn't know that they're on an active military footing. All you'd know is that they're modernizing their military, right? Uh, two the si things. the One, signal yep. the sig here, here I'll distill my point. Down. The signal the signal of invading the Ukraine is a much clearer and much higher magnitude signal of. An, of oncoming World War Three, than replacing military gear from those fucking seventies. Okay, uh, let me I, say one second. I want to just make real, one, fast, one, fast, one fast, second. Please, 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 please. I want to yeah, add please, on please, to what he said. I wanted to add on to what he said a little bit. So, like, if you have a neighbor who has lots and lots of guns, but stuff. never attacks anybody, you're probably not going to buy guns in defense. But if you have a neighbor who has like two guns and he attacks people, you'll probably buy guns in defense. So even if somebody looks weak but is attacking people, you're more likely to build up your defenses than if they look strong and are not attacking. So Russia just right. building okay. up their military is not okay. going to have the effect of people building up as much defensive forces as a weak country literally attacking another country. If you have war nearby, okay. I, go ahead. Two major points, two major points. Number one to the room, do you not understand that the United States and the UK are like, and the France are like in active military zones and they have like tacitly invaded like yeah, other we're, countries. We're, like we're in the South China Sea. Like we are a large, powerful force that has invaded multiple other countries. We're in seven armed conflicts right now. Um, <clears throat> exactly. So like this is all like what I'm getting at. Number one, do you guys believe like Western powers are not doing this? And number two, more important, sure. do you believe that when you like, do you believe that nations like especially developed nations are not aware that someone is going to imminently strike or is imminently preparing like they, they aren't know aware. Well, well, they 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 are not aware. So, they knew the Ukraine invasion you guys was coming talking, for a month though, and a half. The, the reason, the reason they knew the Ukraine invasion was coming was because Russia was literally moving forces to the border. That's the indication. Well, yeah. even, if they, Building even, up, if they hadn't, even if they hadn't known the Ukraine invasion was coming, this, the, Russia has always seen, even back to the old Soviet days, the, the Ukraine is extremely important to Russia's view of self Well, that, that doesn't matter to because, his point. Because, yeah. because, because, that doesn't, because, 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 because. That doesn't matter to his point. Because, because, because. I'm going to mute you if you say that again. Of the, of the oil. So, so literally, it doesn't matter no, to. It's necessary. So. I didn't. So, so it, doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. 
a yes, Wait, it does. Yes, it's going to treat the Ukraine as a, as a different matter than other parts of the Balkans and or that part of Europe. Okay, that, li- that literally Europe. matters to nothing being said here. So he said, uh, okay, well, so you're, you're, you're muted. I'll, I'll finish this point. I'll finish this point. So well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to say something before that got interrupted. Just, so, uh, so one sec, one sec, okay, one sec. Ahead. So if Russia just stayed, if they didn't move towards the border and didn't make a play like they're obviously going to evade and was just were staying in their uh-huh. country, building up technology, that would not make people worried they were going to invade places. Like America builds up its military and technology all the time. That's not an indication you're going to invade or start a war. That's just an indication, like uh, the other guy said, that it's just building up a military. So you can build up a military without pe- making people or giving people an inclination that you plan to invade unless you literally move your forces to the border that's an indication you plan to invade or if you have spies but go ahead well everyone has spies that's not an indication you're going to invade either exactly so information is going to get out there but here's what i'm getting at uh you okay so what i'm getting at basically is if you look in the big picture uh getting ukraine's um nuclear power plants is very useful if you're the third largest oil producer you can have energy from nuclear power, and then you can uh, sell your oil uh, and, uh, you know, maintain your cost of living and standards of living, blah, blah, blah. So if you take a large hit on the chin now, um, and you even bet against it, so you bet against your currency. Like if I were right now, if I could get access to the Rupal, I would buy shitloads of it because I, I'll, t- I'll even say guests of the room, I don't believe Russia is remotely going to disappear and I don't believe it's going to like economically destruct or anything like that so i would definitely purchase the ruble if i could and it wasn't illegal but um just because it's cheap you know you buy low sell high but uh the main point is uh, i would like them to lose i just uh, i'm afraid i'm not i don't know you know i have very little information but i do hope they get wrecked but at it the would, same time it would be cheaper like, to just build your own nuclear plant. power plants like they have the ability to build their yes. own nuclear power plants why invade a country Again, you hit multiple birds with one stone. You uh, reduce... You, not who reduce, gives you shit about Ukraine in, in World War III? Military spending in the nations abroad. But then, in 10 years, you massively skyrocket your military budget. After what did the invasion gain you? Right? Just do the same strategy Great. without the invasion. Okay. Again, the invasion, what does it gain you? It gains you two things. It gains you a projection of weakness, and it allows your... Uh, allies, all of them, to solidify. So you can say, all right, here's what happens if you want to get something in the world. Okay, this person's going to This person's going to push sanctions. This person is going to do this. It polarizes. This do we can just say that yeah, it polarizes. Well, not polarizes. But I mean, yeah. it gives you a So the problem, with polar, the problem with polarization is that you're uh-huh. also polarizing NATO, and you know who has more money than fucking Chechnya? NATO has more money than Chechnya. Putting, yes. putting, getting Chechnya and fuck it, like Belarus to go on like a war footing. Wow, they have the GDP of like half of Wyoming, right? Okay. They don't matter. They're not going to help you in a fucking world. Let war. me ask you a simpler question. Just, just what do you think China's respect, reaction just, to NATO's present, uh, present uh, behavior? How do you think they view it? What I mean, you mean internally or that. what they've expressed so far? No. No, not well. I would love to hear what they've expressed so far, but as what they've the expressed so China, far is uh-huh. neutrality, where they say both sides. No, 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 no. Not what they're saying. I mean, like, it, pretend for a moment. Obviously, we can't, but pretend for a moment you are ahead of the Chinese military. Yeah, China doesn't like NATO. China, like NATO. China does not like that the China. other countries. China doesn't like NATO. China doesn't want to uh, NATO to expand. I don't think the. I think the the most interest that China has in this is as. Uh, a um a test like a litmus test for how nato would respond to taiwan there you go well i, that's I think that's good. i think that's the most interest that they have i don't think that what they're going to be doing is like oh okay russia let's go into world war three i don't i don't think that like they're getting jazzed up in the way that your polarization analysis would suggest Okay, uh, not they're getting jazzed up because I would imagine they're already making those plans. It's not like they're getting emotional they're about it. They're secretly planning I for World War more... III to yes. start World War III. No, not to start. It's to, no, no, it's, it. it's to defend against World War III. That's what they're doing. They're trying to yeah. situate. China doesn't have to like worry about defend. being invaded. Uh, why not? Oh, okay, let me let me put that in a, let me put that another way. They do have to worry about being invaded because they're a superpower or they're approaching a superpower, but. 
NATO isn't going to invade China. NATO is not going to invade China. In I mean, war think about that. Think about what you're you saying. Know that? Think about what you're I just, saying. Russia NATO is right next. There's no, I think it's China. unlikely. Doesn't have invasion clauses. I think it's unlikely attacks. because they don't have. Britain, they don't China, have an. Britain, they don't China, have an America, ambition. Man. I think it's because That's NATO right, doesn't. We disagree. Goodness gracious! Well, one at a time, please. please. I think China, I think one at a time, please. NATO be like. I would love to answer your question, but someone else is talking. NATO okay. can't go in, but individual states can. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that like Germany is interested in trying to occupy or annex China. Mm, in the same, no. it, Russia, China Russia is Taiwan Russia here. is interested in right. China's interested in annexing Taiwan back. Russia yes, is interested in annexing Ukraine back. So, yes, I think that Taiwan has to worry about China invading. I don't think China has to worry about, um, I think, the probability that Germany is going to invade, no, unilaterally Britain. invade no, China. I, don't, I, don't, I think Britain, the probability Britain, that the Britain. UK is going, the UK has a tiny yes, military. They will. There's no yes, way they, they do will. it They're ignorant. Unilaterally. Okay, can I say something? There's no the way only it's possible tiny. way it's they will. Is to, so so the only possible way is to watch too much James Bond, dude. No, listen. All right, again, my so, sex is going to go in. Is, uh, any, has any interest in, uh, in a war? Britain, neither do no one in the UK. No one in the UK is saying let's let's start matter. the British Empire back up. It again, there's no. It's not. It no, matter. it is. It has been a political goal yeah. of of no, Putin it, for like thirty years to rebuild the USSR. Right. So we've I, seen I got, that, how do you know that? See that demonstrate. We've how do you know that? Because we've seen it demonstrated by How do you his... know that? I'm trying to answer you right yeah. now. Yeah. So why do you think it, why do you think we've seen it do anything my mind was taken? Okay. Well, so so I want to right? I want to see well, over, over the know. mind for, for over the mind. What I want to see is I want you to see. All right, well, dude, one sec, one sec, one sec. One sec. It's my up. room. So what I want to see is I want you to go through like the art of war from Sung Su, and I want to tell you which one of these are actually benefited by what Russia is doing. Because if you go through them, uh, most of them are one sec. Most oh, of them are okay, contradicted. Okay. So most of the things Russia no. is doing, if you go through like the art of war or any kind of war based strategy is destroying any chance they have at World War III. That's essentially what they're doing with this. Is they have no chance in World War III from this whatsoever. Um, so if so, you could show again, me in the art of war. war. I want you to show me. Show me in the art of war like which one of these things are benefited because everything you're saying goes against every known tactic in war strategy. Uh, no. Two yes. strategies. And it's been a long time since I read, but I remember two. Number one, uh, don't be where your enemy expects you to be and uh, appear weak uh when you are strong and appear strong when you are weak uh, yes so, so that would mean two, not uh, attacking paraphrasing. yeah so that'd um, be not attacking again, it's the opposite i don't know i just think uh you know russia appeared to be strong and they have disabused a lot of people of how, that how do they appear strong uh because we were thought they were going to like steamroll the ukraine and they obviously did not at all no, so up here, the whole, <laughs> whole world thought they were going to steamroll the Ukraine. Do you see how that works? Like the whole world's like, "Oh my God, the Ukraine's going to be over in like two days," and then no, nobody no. thinks that. But we're we're, we're, that, we're no, aware. Yeah. 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 Okay, so so that in war, typically what you do is you bomb the shit out of places that you're going to conquer, and then you move your troops into it. Russia did not do that at all. Okay, I know. Well, they can't but do Russia's, that because Russia's they're trying Russia's to push air force. The, Russia's. Yeah. We, well, I mean, well, they're doing it in Kiev they, now. Right? I think they didn't your, do that because it's a peacekeeping analysis, mission. Your analysis yeah. so they, requires yeah. how peacekeeping works. Requires something like Russia to have a lot of hidden military assets, so that like no. the base that you present. I well, I think it does, and I'll, I'll give you a reason. Why. I'll let you finish. I'll explain why. But go ahead. Okay. Um. So if we're aware of Russia's military assets, like we're aware that they have an air force, they haven't been very active. There's questions yep. about why haven't they been using this, right? Interesting. So, no drone strikes either. So, very minimal. Yeah. So uh, I think the idea that Russia is going to invade because then people will ask questions about why they didn't use the air force. I don't think that the gain in like, oh, there, there's some sort of mystery here. I don't think that that has much strategic mm -hmm. value when compared to the degree the of, like, 
ardent resistance that you're going to have from other okay. countries, both in NATO and who are NATO adjacent, we're now going to be more interested in joining NATO, like Finland. Do you want me to say a top tip on this one? Just so you okay, can, like, let me let me uh, let me respond with uh, two yeah, questions. Number one, plus you want the infrastructure. Uh, what if, uh, first of all, you don't need to hide uh, all your military or very much of it. You just need to hide a winning military strategy, like one or two pieces of hardware that yeah, you know really are very, very special. But they're not hiding like, it from you, no, right? Let me finish. You let know me finish. about it. Let me finish. No, I'm not aware of it. I'm just saying, what if like Russia and China realized that most, or they developed something that made most of modern day, especially older modern day, Why would they hold weapon it back? really obsolete. That was the word I was looking for, obsolete. What if they developed a simple weapon that made could... tanks obsolete? Then what? Yeah, then is, uh... you invade. Then <laughs> Wait, what? You Wait, what? Then science you fiction. Up all your obsolete this is science machinery. fiction. You're writing science, science fiction, fiction right now. Science yes. fiction. Science fiction. Science fiction. Do you have any, do you have any like reason to think that, that this that have made things do you, do you, yes. do you have do you have some reason to think this is the case? Well, I could think that they maybe they invented lightsabers. Wait, hold, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. So even if they did, let's say they invented some new technology that can just wipe out all tanks. What possible benefit is there to attack people first? Portable man pads. Uh, that, no, so they can't wipe out all tanks. So yeah. even if they did, even if it's some magic new technology, there's still no benefit to starting a pre-war and get lots of sanctions to lose economically before implementing this thing. So if they wanted to start World War III, they'd still be better off by not telegraphing their moves and starting a preemptive war that causes everyone to build up their military. Literally the well, worst decision yep. they could make is to start a pre-war. Okay, but just imagine this scenario while you're responding to me. Imagine that this weapon is like only known by like 10 people and you just murdered all of them and you set in place the buildings necessary to mass produce this, but you haven't made a single prototype yet. Um, what do you see imagine... starring in this film that you're writing? Okay, what do you imagine is the lead actor? Thought experiment. It's a thought experiment. Just stick with it. Here. Sure, with sure. It. So yeah. you have a bunch exactly of what I was thinking. Machinery. He's writing a movie. A That's bunch... exactly what I was thinking. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh, you're funny. But yes, yeah, so uh, you have a bunch of obsolete machinery and uh, you don't want people to panic when you start building up your military again, especially with this new age technology. So let's, right? so, so let's attack another country. That'll make sure people don't panic when we build up our military. Genius. That is genius. The best way to make okay, people not okay. panic is by attacking someone. Genius. I asked him ages genius. ago if this was a bluff. Think, and he was okay, saying the whole thing's a bluff. Like, he's okay, basically if calling you it a bluff. produced billions of dollars a year and you lose like a few tanks, not a few, but like a hundred tanks, some armored vehicle, well, a hundred armored vehicles, uh, like yeah, things crazy. that are no longer useful. Or you and could just you throw them away. Throwing, you, you literally just park right? them in a you corner can... and not blow them up, and that would work just fine. Or you could sell them. Or you could sell them. The or, or you could sell them. And you appear not weak. The whole you, world. You could literally sell them. There's this thing called a junkyard. So hold hold up. There's this thing called a junkyard. There's lots of play old tanks are in this junkyard where America puts them when uh -huh. they don't want to maintain them. Russia could just do the same thing uh, instead of starting a war. And then we would be like, oh my god, they have like a thousand hundred tanks that they could turn on at any time. No, we can tell the difference between a storage field for dead tanks and new tanks. Like we wouldn't count, oh look, they all have a whole bunch of tanks in a storage field. They have this many tanks. Like no military well, does that. Just, military yeah, really intelligence isn't right. like, oh look, look at all the stored tanks fair. Americans have in their junkyards. There's like a billion tanks America has. No one says that. No one is that stupid. I hope so. Like, like, do you well, think so Russia? Do you think Russia is like looking at the storage fields of <laughs> planes? So. It's like, oh, look at all these planes America has that are just sitting out in the rain and snow, taking damage. Clearly, they're just a huge threat to our military because they're going to use these. Well, I mean, at the same time, like, you don't want to put like a thirty million dollar tank in like a rust, you know, situation. Yes, but, a better uh, strategy is to know. send it to another country to get blown up. Genius. Yes, yes. Only if you've developed the weapon where weaponry that makes it obsolete. In yes. The new so, so let's waste millions of dollars. Let's waste millions of more dollars to transport it to get blown up instead you of jump? just parking it. Yes, Genius. but as opposed to what? What do you do with it? Like if it has no other use. Can I call Uncle? Yeah. Can I call what? Uncle and say he's right? 
What no, Echo, 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 Echo wanted to, to say something, I think. Learn. Was you that Echo? Want to learn. Angel, I think you're missing the point. Some on opinions. This one, like, they, are, they are throwing artillery at each other. Like they, they, they've, they've, This war in the Middle East, in the Middle East, in the Ukraine, it's like a Stone Age war, dude. They're not using drones, like you say. Minimal tanks. They throwing are artillery. They're throwing artillery at each other, fella. They're not, they do you know, talk about, like, they, uh, hang some, uh, drone I strike, speak a little bit like, slower. Uh, doesn't mean you get to interject. Ukraine okay. got a few oh, wait, over my, oh, let, let him uh, mind let him finish it, go not ahead I fight in this war like it's it's world war three dude they've kept it yeah. on, on on the level no. should we say yeah, yeah I agree with that okay. that would be very stupid they're throwing, they're throwing throwing mind mind, mind. let him finish oh, let him shit. finish that literally Russia two seconds. basically em Russia is basically emptying their stocks of artillery rounds and rockets and stuff are about to go out of date what literally go out of date so that's Lost literally, literally a stupid idea. So they could literally just put it on a shelf or trash it. There's no reason to shoot it at somebody to start a war. Well, very do, do you realize if, if, Russia take, if Russia take Ukraine, if Russia take Ukraine, they, they, they double their population. Do you realize that? that does nothing to help them. Starting at, doubling their population doesn't help them build their military. If World War III just something to say that instead of you know, like all those people, I thought, you know, a lot of people are saying that what would they do if they're not using it? It is better to just empty the stocks. No, it's not. They would easily sell it to lesser nations. That would be much more beneficial than just shooting it. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Uh, that's oh. actually a valid point. Valid point. Valid point. Like they could literally just sell it. it with lots of you cannot buy sell it. it. You can't sell a rocket if it's gone past its sell by date. You donut. Yes, you can. Are you kidding no, me? Well, but literally, you literally, can. most oh, of the I'm musicians. Sorry, hold up, hold up, hold up. Most just of. Sell it on the well, stop, 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 stop. So weapons work way past their sell by date. They don't stop working, um, in their once they get past the sell by date. And so literally, literally, a lot of the weapons day. that are sold to third world nations are weapons yeah. that have passed their sell by date. So the, yeah. yes, you can oh, sell those. Calls, Does yeah. happen a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, I, there's I a marketplace for surplus government weaponry, I believe. Yep. Yeah, are you guys worried the rockets are going to get moldy? What? What's going on here? <laughs> no, like moldy. rocket, rocket uh, the rocket components could become inert after no, a certain Solid no. fuel no. might, yeah, it might decay. But... Yeah, their, their chips so, are just no, going to like turn to putty, putty, like usable or reduce its effectiveness or reduce. No, so that's not that's not how that's not how weapons work. So the reason weapons go like lose their sell by date is when you get a new technology and you don't want to maintain the old technology to maintain it. It's not going to like decay and stop working. It's because you have new things that are better. So so the old things yeah. get cost. They don't. They don't like stop working. Okay. Like you can still shoot power, bullets from like World War Two. Sounds very logical. The solid, the solid rocket fuel goes off. The explosives go off, and they don't work. And the, basically, the uh, the rate of success goes down dramatically. But not to zero. So they, they're, they're still usable. They're still usable. That is yes, only still usable. Cool. Yeah, like one in ten might work. Well, no, they, they definitely like don't go bad. They don't go bad that fast at all. You can still use weapons from like World War II. They still work today. Yeah, shit that goes bad is like corrosive primers. That that goes bad, but nobody, but nobody but Russia uses that. Exactly. Are you at that? And they're even out. They're out. They're they're phasing all that stuff out, anyways. Yeah, they're yeah, trying to okay. Ukraine to get rid of it. Yeah, well, Americans yeah. are buying it too, just because it's dirt cheap and. There's a big AK craze in the U.S. and all the aficionados are burning through all that ammo. Like Russia's still pumping out like, like they're pumping out better ammo, and they've like completely phased out like corrosive primers. So with rockets, it's the same thing. They're phasing out anything with corrosive uh, materials and going for all the cleaner burning shit. But you can li you can literally sell yes. like oh, yeah. second, third generation tanks to oh, anywhere yes. in the Africa. Argument that they're just emptying the cells because they have got something new doesn't make sense. Like it's, yeah, it's instead of, instead of throwing it away, let's just shoot it at people. Let's just let's just bomb a different country with our old stuff because yes, it's old. Yes, but yeah. you are yeah. still getting yeah. stuff. You understand? You're using obsolete weaponry to gain nuclear power, to gain an interest in the world population. The only thing, the only thing and can we just throw out some facts doing. here? Wait, the only facts. thing, throw out some facts. The population of Russia is one. Point, I mean, 145 million population of Ukraine is about 45 million. Go. What is, what? Po what is the population okay. matter? Like, we could take Africa and add a few billion people. Population doesn't really do anything to help us. It helps yeah, like us the population, the population comparison is a factor if we're going to go into full scale war. Then, yeah, Russia's got the whole attrition 
uh, tactic on Russia, its side. Russia, yes, and Russia also is the largest uh, landmass. They control the most amount of land in the world. But go ahead. Yeah, good job. You control a tundra. Yeah, also, also, yeah. Guys, guys, guys. If uh, Russia, if Russia, if fucking Ukraine joined NATO, Russia would get backed into a corner, wouldn't it? Because then yeah, that's... Ukraine would take back Crimea. You're Wait, thinking too logically. E evil is you're, you're actually evil is actually talking about the actual problem right here. We're talking about like a World War Three kind of doomsday uh, Bond yeah. movie. You so know, so twenty years. You're being, now, you're being too logical, evil. Like you're talking about like the real actual uh -huh. problems. All right, don't yeah. be rude. But I would love to hear some facts. You know, facts are nice, whatever they may be related. Uh, uh, but uh, all right, so is, China has one point four. Another fact, a cool fact. Wait, guys, a related fact is that. Yeah, it's have a, you seen the map of Russia that turned upside down? How guys, Russia guys, and, guys, and the flanks that they could possibly. Russia be has had on four. How over you, you want to give your facts? I give my facts first. Fucking, it took Germany and the Soviet Union thirty-five days to take fucking Poland. To take Poland, that was with like industrial power of Germany and, sure. and to, to, like fucking surprise of having two countries against one. It took them thirty-five. So that I had that it's like I'm sure is it take is it is it that? All my point is is that if you made like bullets that can like somehow pierce tank armor or I'm not gonna say it just because I don't have the you idea. Blow a tank in half, you can you blow a tank in half with a shaped water charge. Tanks okay, yeah, antiquated. again they yeah, Ta they tanks gotta... are antiquated. Tanks are antiquated because they are they 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 are just like a just to you know, fill the void. Okay, so here's long term where I'm at. Winning the war. It's, it's called the RPG. Russia, Russia, are fight, well, Russia, I... Russia are using artillery and tanks, dude. They're fighting this war like it's World War II. Yeah, like, like R so RPGs, rocket, rocket propelled grenades. And chips. But, Again, but yes, this would yeah, be know, uh, going but... on my point that uh, tanks are becoming more and more obsolete and uh, the thousands upon anti tank missiles that they were handed to for free might be a sign that tanks don't aren't really as necessary as they used to be. Yes, and the most so efficient way to dispose of them is to start a war. Vehicles, getting a slightly good objective, appearing weak, and preparing yourself 10 years or 20 years from now for the major war that's actually going to matter for no energy, gonna... for resources, for food. You know, we have water shortages, energy shortages. We have a lot of fucking problems Mind, right now. No one coming out of this thinking Russia's massively weak. No matter what the result, really? the result is. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm, no, no one, one, no one is that. thinking no one that. Thinks, I maybe think that. No one, th that, is, that is a problem with your argument. No one thinks Russia's weak, dude. I don't, don't know, man. The, the They're nukes, losing, you don't think we still a uh, real potential? Earth. Ukraine not seems to be kicking their ass. Uh, not winning in like three days. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's assume all of the Russian military are completely incompetent. No let's let's assume just every single Russian soldier is stupid and and just can't hit anything. They have nuclear missiles. No one thinks Russia they, is. Weak. No one wants to use nuclear missiles. Okay. Russia's going slow, bit at a time. This okay. Imagine reality. you can't use North nuclear Korea has nukes. Second, you think like, they're weak. Because you know, if you yeah. use them, you'll be bombarded. And Obvious. Russia's going slowly. So let's assume that you know having nukes does not make you appear strong. It definitely That's does. That's one thing you can't do. You can't assume, all right? But, but listen, look, dude, yeah. it's obvious. Look, the bearing is that Russia's not weak, okay? It's strong. Strong nature. It's got nuclear missiles that can fly through your letterbox. I disagree with your like billion mark. It, it, it doesn't matter what you think. That's the reality of it, yeah? Also true. So it's, so it's, so it's obvious. So it's obvious that Russia is going slowly. Fighting this war like it's World War Two. Well, I, I don't. Slowly. I don't think it's it's that they're going Why slowly. Why do you think, I think that think, is? Again, I think it's they just anticipated it to be a lot more successful than they were. I think they were going to, they thought they were going to steamroll Ukraine like America steamrolled Iraq, and they didn't expect Ukraine to be able to put up such a good defense. And so they just didn't invest as many military resources because they didn't expect to need as many military resources. And so that, I disagree with. that seems to be like no, the more I, rational. No, no, I think, I, no, I think Russia are doing this intentionally. I think they expected to Ukraine to be weaker, but you can adjust your strategy, which they have not done. They've just gone into peace talks. It's almost like the uh, Ukrainian generals understood Russian tactics somehow. Like they were preparing for it. I mean, like they were fighting. trained similarly. It's so weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. but Why? it's also true, like how Russia would probably be like aware of these trainings, and they would probably be aware of like how they're going to like fundamentally do in a war wait how I is this how is this war. different from the array uh, the invasion of afghanistan like how is what what tactic here is different from well, them invading are you talking afghanistan? about russia's invasion yes. failed yep. to, of yep. afghanistan yep because okay. it's a euro, right no no why, i mean like why did tactically russia not, 
Their, their military why, why usage did... and tactics seem to be the same in both. They seem to be failing in both. I don't see why this one is some kind of super conspiracy for World War III and Afghanistan was somehow not, even though it's the exact same tactics. Wait, you know, why did Russia not take enough fuel? Every side? Why did, did Russia not take enough fuel and food for the soldiers? Again, we uh, kind of harped on that. That was a bit because uh, allegedly, you know, you have logistical issues and uh, yes, you have the fuel. You can't get the fuel to the tanks, so, you know, probably mo. So, so yeah, it seems like the same thing. Like, food? Yes, also, food? also logistical yeah, also problem. Also, same logistical. If, you, if your trucks cannot resupply and your supply lines are destroyed by drones or other issues, then yes, uh, you would appear like you have no fuel when, in fact, you have a lot of fuel, it just can't get to where it needs to go. Doesn't it seem I, like I in this it... conversation all of us are making excuses why Russia aren't doing better than they should be doing? No, I think I think it's uh, yeah, pretty that's... obvious. I think it's pretty obvious at this stage that Russia are going slowly because they could they could, they could like obliterate a whole city like one night. So what that tells you is okay. they don't they, they wait they don't they don't yeah. actually want to kill everybody. They don't want to kill everybody. Oh so yeah, see, he, he could he could have sent a whole lot in you're, you're and like you say like obliterate the shit out of it. Could have like, could have like, obliterated. Um, could have obliterated. Look, I agree. I hate. I, wait, wait, shut up. I, shut up. I don't want it to be a situation <laughs> where people up. are pinning this war on Putin, making it Putin's war. Forget that. Get that out of your head. It's got nothing to do with Putin. He's got, he's got Belarus, Serbia, Kazakhstan. He's got other allies. Russia. Like you say, he could have Russia. sent everybody in, taken the place like that. He could have obliterated fucking, well, yeah, the whole of Europe if he wanted to. Yeah, but, but isn't he doing well, proportionally? He has, he has a strategy laid out yeah. that, okay. well, yeah, he's not revealing it. Right. He doesn't know. He's not, not going to he's not gonna rise to the bait. He's not going to rise to the bait of the propaganda of the Ukrainian people around from the west at the moment to take up arms and needlessly die in an artillery attack. Don't you, he's not gonna don't do you that. think he's just taking like baby steps so he doesn't get a huge reaction from the world? Exactly. He, he, exactly. he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to get nuked. Um, huge level. You're already guarding Yeah. So I think we would be aware that the moment, like even ten tanks cross a uh, what do you call it? Like a I can't even think of the word right now. But uh, 10 tanks on Ukrainian soil is like going to be a major overreaction. I think anyone can assume that with half a brain, right? It's baiting well, the Americans in. Baiting the Americans in. If you get into, uh, you know, Ukrainian borders, it's going to be considered an invasion and you're going to have a reaction no matter what. You, but you want a lower reaction than a reaction of bombing, carpet bombing a city. Oh, yeah, no, be, and that, that's not logical. You don't want the so reaction of... Stop discussing that. Like, obviously, you can carpet bomb a place, but it defeats the entire purpose of war, which is to gain resources. If you destroy... Well, it could be. The He's just trying to do a slow burn Ukraine. on the Ukraines. On the yeah, Ukrainians. You, can, you know, you go, you go after the economy, you go after the energy resources, but if you carpet bomb, yeah, he, he you doesn't, doesn't waste want to kill all them. potential and you kill waste them, like, the he entire... They are Russian. Why you go to war? Well, it could be he's just trying to coax NATO into engaging. That way you can say, yeah, see? Exactly. See, told you. Yes. Power see, hungry NATO. Thank you. Thank you. Power that. hungry, a bit, that's what I'm getting at. So and, you can be like, and, look, China. Look, India. Look at how unfair this is. Look at how, like, all the Western nations are all just lining up against us, and it's totally unfair, even though most of them are occupying other nations. That's my point. That's what yeah, I'm getting Then at. he's got 300 years of Russian history to tell them, like, see, told you the West can't keep their fucking hands off of us. Yeah, what, what do you think that's, Zelensky that's he's not going oh yeah can you give me more of this more of that and keep on asking for the help and shit yeah so like think about it like this you have 1.4 billion in India 1.4 billion in China I don't know oh one, 145 million in Russia but you have a shitload of land for all those billions of people and tanks are now more and more obsolete now 2,000 things to the Ukraine can stop all those armored vehicles and tanks now imagine equipping Two billion people, or one billion, let's uh, be realistic here. Imagine equipping like 500 to 600 million mm. active military men with those very same uh, anti tank missiles, or even a cheaper version. You know, maybe you need six or seven shots to take it out. Do you understand how tanks might be obsolete and how wasting them now to get like a lot of benefit? Well, that's probably why Russia's to... been focusing more on like the new generation fighters, air, uh, air superiority. They have no air superiority. Like, where are they? Maybe they don't want to waste them in this fight. They're not engaging in an air war right now. And so you got to ask yourself, why? Why? Because they're taking it very slowly to make sure yeah. they react in against slowly. Oh, that, yeah. so I think slowly. That we, they don't want to kill everybody. Yeah. Can we agree, though, that, like, 
the whole like um taking things slow is like very logical it's very new age like they don't want to go into ukraine killing everybody and like turning everybody in ukraine against them can we agree on that it makes sense if the goal is to coax a reaction out of nato that makes sense yeah i know but in any situation can we agree that a russian humanitarian is not going to be like a like kill everyone scenario or destroy everything scenario can we all agree on that at least they are like shelling civilian centers and like preventing uh, they are yes but in a very stories, light basis right if you look at Western international <laughs> a lot of these places are reporting like war crimes firing on civilians that kind of a thing so i think you if if your if your view is that russia is holding off on airstrikes in order to preserve the uh in order to preserve the civilian population of Ukraine, uh, right, right, I think they're right, right. taking. Chip, 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 I chip, think chip. they're All taking right. other actions. Finish. I think they're taking other actions that show that they're not yes, that yes. interested okay. in minimizing. You are simply a distraction, population. okay? Because if you America back out and go and yeet on over to Taiwan, here's where they're going to come back out with a full force and go and attack Ukraine again, okay? I'm sorry. Yes, I, I understand that. sort of your point. Like you're saying uh, if, well, most of the Western nations are just allegedly supplying like <laughs> arms. So I was, con- what's your overall point with the Taiwan situation? <laughs> so, sorry, I just wanted to interrupt for a second. Um, I got to go, but I wanted to thank you guys for coming to uh, the room and hanging out. Talk. Thank you, dude. Oh. Wait, can you friend me? I like you. Sure. Uh, send me a friend request. I don't really use Discord that much. Go ahead. What's also, T Jump is the name of the, the channel, the room. Also, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tjump. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Tjump. All right. See ya.